The girl whom he had secretly loved, after getting drunk, took the initiative to pin him down. After that incident, the guy denied it, saying, even if you stood naked in front of me, I wouldn't be interested at all, and told her, name your price, let's pretend like nothing ever happened. The girl couldn't believe it. Clearly, he had been gentle that night, but now he was so cold. She chased after him, begging him, don't go, I want to bet once, bet that you like me. She uttered three words, I like you. The guy inadvertently pushed her hand away, who do you think you are? If you weren't drunk, do you think I would touch you? Let me tell you the truth, that night I had no idea. I had no idea I touched anyone. Kui Yusi's body immediately went limp, not understanding why, the cold voice of Ha Kui then echoed in her ears, if possible, I hope you never appear in front of me again. Since that day, Kui Yusi truly never appeared again. The first love that hadn't even begun seemed to be buried alive by her. In the blink of an eye, for years passed, and Kui Yusi gradually forgot about that night. But in a gathering that brought them together again, when Ha Kui then walked in, Kui Yusi was stunned in place. She had imagined meeting him again, but she never thought it would happen like this. He appeared as the roommate's boyfriend. Kui Yusi bowed her head, her hands tightening with tension, the scene from four years ago replaying in her mind, reigniting the pain she had buried for so long. Suddenly, Kui Yusi heard someone suggesting a change of venue, and she breathed a sigh of relief. Finally, she found an excuse to leave. As she lifted her head, her eyes met Ha Kui Thant's gaze. Let's go to Kim Bitch Hui Hong, someone suggested. Hearing this, the sisters the suggestion for Kui Yusi to sing. Kui Yusi immediately declined, feeling awkward, and said she wasn't comfortable and wanted to go back to the dorm to rest. Feeling Ha Kui Thant's silence, Kui Yusi's heart couldn't help but sink. She knew he didn't want to see her. After all, what happened four years ago, to him, might have just been a drunken mistake, or perhaps he had long forgotten about it, forgotten about how he had humiliated a girl named Kui Yusi. In the chilly rainy season, Kui Yusi walked back to the dorm alone in the rain when she saw Ha Kui Then and Tu Na standing at the dorm entrance, holding an umbrella. The intimate gesture between the two made her feel too overwhelmed to move forward, leaving her no choice but to retreat like a fool, ignoring the rain falling on her face. Suddenly, Ha Kui then walked towards Kui Yusi, causing Kui Yusi to quickly hide behind the bushes nearby, using her handbag to cover her face, praying not to be noticed by Ha Kui then. After about five minutes passed, thinking that Ha Kui then must have gone far away, she quietly stepped out, preparing to return to her dorm for a warm shower. Feeling embarrassed and desperate to avoid being seen by Ha Kui then in her current miserable state, Kui Yusi quickly turned around intending to flee from the scene. However, she accidentally slipped and fell to the ground with a thud. Enduring the pain from her injuries, she struggled to get back up. Hearing the noise, Ha Kui then slowly walked towards her. Finally, it had come to this again, she felt like a mockery in front of him. The cold rain falling on her wound made her shiver involuntarily. Ha Kui then furrowed his brow as he looked at her. She thought he might show some concern for her injury, but to her surprise, he coldly turned away and left. Left alone in the cold rain, Kui Yusi limped back to the dormitory, feeling abandoned and dejected. At that moment, Ha Kui then called to inquire, has everyone in the dormitory returned? Only after learning that Kui Yusi had returned did he hang up, finally feeling relieved. Meanwhile, Kui Yusi locked herself in the bathroom, listening to their discussion about Ha Kui then, Tina, your boyfriend is really nice. He just said he wanted bubble tea, and he bought it for our whole room. Moreover, he doesn't drink alcohol. No matter how people invite him, he just says one thing, drinking alcohol leads to trouble. Dot. Upon hearing this, Kui Yusi's complexion turned pale, the echoes of the events from four years ago reverberating in her ears. Ha Kui then looked at her with disdainful eyes, if I hadn't drunk that night. Do you think I would have done anything to you? In that moment, she truly wished she could disappear. Ha Kui then arrived at Kui Yusi's dormitory. As he was about to knock on the door, he heard Lam Na asking Kui Yusi, 
Hakui then also went to Aetutan High School. Did you two know each other before? Kuyusi shook her head without hesitation. No, we didn't know each other. That's too bad. I was curious about what he was like in high school. Tonight, Ha Kui then is inviting us to join a party with famous people in the film and television industry. Do you want to go? Kui Yusi replied, no, as a knock on the door interrupted their conversation. Opening the door, they found Ha Kui then standing there. Kui Yusi quickly raised her book to cover her face. Ha Kui then glanced at her. Seeing the bubble tea in the trash can, anger flashed in his eyes. When Tina asked again, does Kui Yusi want to come? Ha Kui then interrupted her with an unhappy expression, saying, not everyone can attend the party tonight, don't invite those irrelevant people, then stormed off in anger. Kui Yusi tried to focus on her book in the dormitory, but everything that had happened earlier made it impossible for her to calm down. Leaving would be better than staying here. Kui Yusi had just arrived home when her mother told her, we have a guest today, someone you know. Kui Yusi was curious about who it could be, then suddenly saw a familiar figure in the living room. As the person turned around, Kui Yusi stood frozen in place, how could he be here in my house? Wasn't he supposed to attend the party with Lam, na? During dinner, Kui Yusi felt very uneasy and accidentally dropped food on herself. Startled, she stood up and said, I need to use the restroom for a moment. In the restroom, thinking about this meal made her feel like she was being pricked by needles. It would be best to find an excuse to return to school. After leaving, she quickly put on her shoes and said, I have something urgent at school. A while later, her mother called her, asking, What do you think about Ha Kui Than? When you had that incident before, you were forced to take a three-year break from school. You're not a child anymore, so you should think about your future. Moreover, the two of you have had an engagement since childhood, her mother continued. Kui Yusi felt a headache coming on. If Ha Kui then finds out, he might think I'm clinging to him and won't let go. Kui Yusi exploded. Shouting into the phone, Ha Kui then and I are not feasible. I can consider anyone except Ha Kui then. Upon hearing this, Ha Kui then heard everything, the car door opened and then slammed shut with a loud bang as he stepped on the gas and sped off like a rocket. At that moment, he saw Kui Yusi hurrying back to school, worried that she would be unsafe walking alone at night, so he found an excuse to leave as well, wanting to take Kui Yusi back to school. As she waited for her to return to the dormitory, the landline suddenly rang. She picked up the phone and heard Ha Kui Than's voice. Kui Yusi tried to appear composed and asked, Are you looking for Lam, na? He didn't say anything and just hung up the phone. Kui Yusi felt perplexed and couldn't understand, did he refuse to talk because he heard my voice on the phone? After Lam, Na, and everyone returned, Kui Yusi said to Lam, Na, your boyfriend called the dormitory landline looking for you. Hearing it was Ha Kui then, her roommate rushed to the phone to check, but after seeing the call time, she was stunned, 10 p.m.? Wasn't he with us at that time? Lam Na froze upon hearing this, there are four people in the dormitory, only Kui Yusi was absent. Could it be that he called, because of Kui Yusi? With this thought, Lam Na's face darkened, what exactly is the relationship between you and Ha Kui Then? From that day on, Ha Kui Then was nowhere to be seen. Until the weekend when Lai Dat invited the dormitory to go to the hot spring. When Kui Yusi arrived and saw Ha Kui Then was also there, she immediately regretted accepting Lai Dat's invitation. Compared to Kui Yusi, Lam Na and everyone else were very surprised, warmly greeting Ha Kui Then. Lai Dat felt it was quite a coincidence, turns out everyone knows each other. Suddenly, he suggested adding his WeChat. Ha Kui then glanced at Kui Yusi and took out his phone for Lai Dat to scan the code. The others also wanted to be friends after seeing this, except for Kui Yusi who buried herself in eating. When Lai Dad asked her, do you want to add WeChat friends, she immediately lowered her eyes. After thinking for a while, she lifted her head with a natural expression and lied, I forgot to bring my phone. Hearing this, Ha Kui then frowned but didn't say anything. 
At this moment, Lydat curiously asked them, why do you call him student leader? It seems like he doesn't study at our school. Hakui, then, is indeed a student at our school, he majors in directing. Hearing this, Kui Yusi looked up in surprise at Ha Kui then, wasn't he the top student nationwide back then? Didn't he attend the top university s? Why did he transfer to film school b? Lai Dat was also very surprised, feeling that Ha Kui then had gone crazy, giving up the top school and the family business to come here and study in this unrelated field. Ha Kui then closed his eyes, Ha Kui then, you're really crazy, running here because of her, you must be insane. Suddenly, he slammed the table and stood up, saying, I'll go outside for a bit. Instantly, there was a bit of awkwardness in the air as they all looked at each other for a moment. Right at that moment, Kui Yusi's phone rang loudly. She quickly stood up and said, I've had too much tea, I'll go to the restroom for a moment. After finishing her phone call with her mother, Kui Yusi stepped out to the restroom only to find Ha Kui then leaning against the wall. Feeling the tension between them, she decided to pretend not to notice him and quickly left the area. As she was about to pass by him, she silently sighed with relief, but before she could fully relax, Ha Kui then grabbed her wrist. Kui Yusi felt a bit flustered and tried her best to free herself from his grip, asking, What do you want? Ha Kui then forcefully pushed her against the wall, lifting her chin up, his eyes glaring fiercely at Kui Yusi. What do I want? It's what you want that matters. Didn't I tell you not to appear in front of me anymore? Or are you doing these things? Before he could finish, Kui Yusi struggled to speak, coincidentally, if possible, I also hope you never appear in front of me again. Ha Kui then seemed to want to tear her apart into pieces. She knew he was angry, but she didn't understand why. For years ago, clearly, she was the one who had to endure much humiliation. She wouldn't allow herself to be like before. She coldly said, Mr. Ha, please kindly release me gently, so I can quickly disappear from you. After speaking, she even sarcastically added, Thank you. Ha Kui then leaned close to her ear, saying, Thank me? What are you thanking me for? Do I need to thank you, or should I help you remember what happened four years ago? Kui Yusi stared back at him coldly, unable to move, fearing that if she did, her suppressed tears would burst forth. Ha Kui then seemed to recall something, suddenly stepping back, leaving Kui Yusi behind, overwhelmed with emotions. She gritted her teeth tightly. Only after Ha Kui then walked away did she slowly sink down against the wall, unable to contain her tears any longer as they streamed down her face. How can I avoid hurting her in the end? Clearly, there are feelings for the girl, but I coldly rejected her confession and even told her to disappear from my world, just because when she was with me, she mentioned someone else. Since that day, she knows he despises her without knowing that for three years, every day, he visited her in the hospital. Now, just to see her, he actively approaches her roommate. After learning about this, Lam Na's heart was immediately seized by jealousy. She couldn't bear being seen as a pawn by Kui Yusi. When she saw Kui Yusi sitting there alone, she approached and lied, I'm on my period today, could you please buy some sanitary pads for me? Bring them to room 1080. Kui Yusi didn't think much, happily agreeing to help her. As she knocked on the door, she heard Ha Kui Then's voice, causing her to hesitate for a moment. Ha Kui Then is Lam Na's boyfriend, so it's normal for them to be together, she thought to herself. With that in mind, she opened the door and walked in, placing the bag down, intending to leave right after. When she looked up, she saw Ha Kui Then. And Kui Yusi was so frightened that she broke out in a cold sweat, stuttering, I came to bring Lam Na her things. Upon hearing this, Ha Kui then let out a cold laugh, sure, that's a pretty good excuse, he said, bending down in front of Kui Yusi. If you want to come to my room, just say it straight. Kui Yusi felt that he was being completely irrational, so she turned and left. She coincidentally met Lam Na and the others on their way to deliver food to Ha Kui then. Kui Yusi was surprised, what's going on? About to ask Lam Na, she was abruptly interrupted by Lam Na herself, Ha Kui then, we ordered some food for dinner and thought you might be here, 
so we came to ask if you'd like to join us. Ha Kui then didn't even bother to look up before declining her offer. Lam Na, unfazed by Ha Kui then's indifference, continued in a light tone, if you feel hungry later, just let me know. Then, she turned to Kui Yu Si, with an innocent expression and asked, why are you here? Sensing the tension, the other two friends stepped in to help, they all attended to Tan High School, the number one school in the city. They might have known each other from before. Lam Na smiled with her mouth, but not with her heart, but earlier. I asked Kui Yu Si, and she said she didn't know Ha Kui then, right? At this moment, Kui Yu Si also understood, she deliberately set a trap for me to be labeled as flirting with my best friend's boyfriend. Kui Yu Si stared intently at Lam Na, why are you here? Didn't you say you needed me to buy sanitary pads for you, and specifically told me that you moved to room 1808? She pointed to the side as she spoke, your things that you asked me to buy are over there. Lam Na immediately teared up, feeling deeply wronged, and said, I've been at the hot spring all evening, I didn't say any of those things. Are you trying to find Ha Kui then? Is that why you're using me as a shield without any reason? For years ago, everyone said, as soon as Kui Yu Si stepped into the film school B, he became extremely famous. If it weren't for the accident three years ago that left him in a coma, he would have become a celebrity in the entertainment industry long ago. All my kindness towards you is in vain. Yet, you approach Ha Kui then and use me as a shield, she said, bursting into tears. After a series of gestures, both roommates believed her, urging Kui Yu Si to apologize to Lam Na. Kui Yu Si couldn't understand. I didn't do anything wrong, why doesn't anyone believe my explanation? Ha Kui then couldn't bear it anymore. Wanting to speak up to stop Lam Na, but Kui Yu Si's cold laughter cut him off. Do you not feel guilty for saying such things? She spoke while taking off her wristwatch, replaying the recorded conversation with Lam Na. Lam Na was immediately startled, seeing the recording still playing, she swiftly lunged towards Kui Yu Si, demanding, Stop it right now. As she screamed and swung her arms, she also swung her handbag towards Kui Yu Si. Seeing the bag about to hit Kui Yu Si's face, a hand grabbed her arm, pulling her back entirely turning to scold Lam Na. Kui Yu Si said, Are you crazy? Two seconds later, Kui Yu Si regained his composure, unconsciously pushing Ha Kui then away, saying, Don't touch me. Then, Kui Yu Si looked at Lam Na with a cold gaze and said, I gave you a chance, but it seems you didn't want it. Angered, she closed in on Lam Na and said, If you knew that I'm not someone to mess with, then let me give you a piece of advice, don't mess with me. It's clear that the girl I like, despite my feelings for her, cruelly rejected my confession because that night she accidentally slept with me, but kept calling out the name of my brother. But the one living in my heart, even if I want to avoid it, can't help but approach. Upon hearing Lam Na call out Kui Yu Si's name, he stepped forward to engage in conversation with her. In that moment, Lam Na felt like she had won the lottery, the incredibly handsome guy. But what made her even happier was that he actively exchanged phone numbers with her, and she pretended to reluctantly agree. After that, she frequently contacted Ha Kui then. Ha Kui then rarely responded to her messages. She thought to herself, it must be his personality, naturally cold-hearted. But when her roommate misunderstood that they were dating, Lam Na didn't clarify because she believed that she had ultimately become his girlfriend. Why else would he invite her out to dinner? Why else would he invite her to attend outdoor parties? Oh, he didn't explicitly invite her, every time, he mentioned the whole room. It's just that at those moments, she was immersed in the joy of being close to him, completely oblivious to the meaning behind his words. It wasn't until that night at the outdoor party when Kui Yu Si told her that Ha Kui then called the dorm looking for her that she began to suspect that the person he wanted to find wasn't her. So when she made plans with Ha Kui then to go out on the weekend, she intentionally told him, Kui Yu Si is going to the hot spring this weekend. As predicted, that evening she unexpectedly ran into Ha Kui then. At that moment, she understood everything, Ha Kui then didn't have any intentions toward her. It was clear that he had other motives, and it wasn't her, but Kui Yu Si. For this whole month, she had just been a pawn being manipulated by others. 
how could she ever be content? How could she be at peace with herself? But ultimately, she didn't want to break up with Ha Kui then. So, she wanted to destroy Kui Yu Si. She wanted their two roommates to look down on her, and she also wanted Ha Kui then to think of her as a scheming woman. Therefore, she plotted and schemed, unaware that Kui Yu Si had a recording device on him. Unable to destroy the one she wanted to destroy, she ended up ruining herself. Surely, those two roommates would both despise her. As for Ha Kui Than. At this moment, Lam Na's fingertips trembled, and she cautiously lifted her head to look at Ha Kui Than. Ha Kui Than bent down to pick up Lam Na's bag. In that moment, a glimmer of hope flickered in Lam Na's desperate heart, is he forgiving me? But the next moment, Ha Kui Than raised the bag in his hand and forcefully threw it towards Lam Na. Tears streamed down Lam Na's face like a river as she choked out, Ha Kui Than. Ha Kui Than's eyes were filled with anger and disgust as he ordered her to leave. After this incident, Lam Na did not return to the dormitory for many consecutive days. Lam Na's roommate mentioned she has moved out. Now she commutes to school by SDI. At this point, they remembered that Ha Kui then also rode an SDI motorcycle, so they speculated that Lam Na had moved in with Ha Kui then. Lam Na grabbed her suitcase, entered, packed her belongings, and left. Kui Yu Si carried the dirty laundry downstairs, seeing Lam Na and Ha Kui then standing facing each other. Could it be that she really moved to Ha Kui then's house? Ha Kui then still kept his head down, suddenly lifted it, just as his eyes met Kui Yu Si's. An indescribable sense of fear welled up within him, unconsciously moving towards Kui Yu Si. But before he could take a few steps, Kui Yu Si quickly turned and left. Entering the laundry room, her heart thumped wildly, she thought she was seeing things. How could he possibly walk towards me? Seeing Kui Yu Si leave, Ha Kui then's mood was extremely terrible not in the mood to hear what Lam Na had to say. He immediately strode to his car. Regardless of how Lam Na knocked on the car door, he closed his eyes and ignored it, accelerating away. Not long after, he received a call from Han Chi Fan, let's meet at Kim Bitch Hui Hong. Seeing Ha Kui Then's unhappy expression, Han Chi Fan asked him, are you not comfortable at the film school? Ha Kui Then remained silent. Han Chi Fan was very curious, you had better options back then, but you chose to abandon the sensible path and pursue film school. Tell me honestly, why did you go to film school? Was it because of someone? Ha Kui then was stunned for a moment, feeling like he had been struck in the heart, he couldn't utter a word. Han Chi Fan continued, is it a man or a woman? Are they also at the film school? Seeing Ha Kui then's worried expression, he knew he had guessed right. But before he could say anything more, Ha Kui then stood up abruptly and left. On his way home, he kept pondering over what Kui Yu Si had said, if possible, I also hope you never appear in front of me again. So, Mr. Ha. Rest assured, I will never bring you any trouble. Please release your precious hands, so I can quickly disappear from your sight. He suddenly slammed on the brakes, not far ahead, a girl was sitting on the ground, her shoulders trembling as if she were crying. Although he couldn't see her face clearly, he recognized who she was as soon as he glanced at her. Feeling disheartened, she didn't want to talk to this man, the man she liked had confessed his feelings to her, but he had told her to disappear from his world. Since that day, the girl truly hadn't appeared again. But four years later, he found himself approaching her frequently. Thinking about her words, she also hoped they would never meet again. His mood suddenly plummeted to the extreme. Suddenly, he hit the brakes. A girl was sitting curled up on the ground, her shoulders trembling as if she were crying. Though he couldn't see her face clearly, he recognized who she was as soon as he glanced at her. Kui Yusi's whole body was trembling, her face covered in beads of sweat, and the stomach pain left her weak and collapsing to the ground. In a daze, someone rushed towards her, continuously calling out, Kui Yusi. The voice was very familiar, seeming to be Ha Kui Thance. But why was he using such a concerned tone? Surely it was just a hallucination from the pain, otherwise, why would he be so anxious? Holding her gently, as if deeply concerned for her well-being. 
Waiting until she opened her eyes again, she looked at the clothes in the closet. She was shocked, hugging the blanket as she sat up abruptly, this is a man's house. Before she could think further, the door to the room creaked open. She lifted her head to look, and it was indeed, ha Kui then. Are all the hallucinations before fainting real? Seeing ha Kui then coming towards her, Kui you see, tightened the blanket, nervously. When she didn't know what to do, Aunt Truong's voice echoed, Mr. Ha, I brought the porridge up here. Shall I feed Miss now? Ha Kui then said nothing, staring at Kui Yu Si for a moment before turning to nod at Aunt Truong. Aunt Truong brought the porridge to the bedside, saying, Miss, you have acute gastritis. You've been given an injection, and the doctor advised you to eat bland food for a few days, she said as she offered the spoon of porridge to Kui Yu Si. Kui Yu Si didn't eat but looked over at Ha Kui then and said, Thank you for last night, then left the bed, rendering Aunt Truong's advice useless. Seeing this, Ha Kui then stepped forward calmly and asked, Does the porridge not suit your taste? Kui Yu Si shook her head and after a moment of silence, she said, Mr. Ha, could you please tell me how much the medicine cost last night? Ha Kui then's expression clearly turned sour, but he didn't pursue her question. Instead, he instructed Aunt Truong to record the medication instructions and handed Kui Yu Si the medication to take. Kui Yu Si couldn't understand, why is he doing this? Clearly, he dislikes me like that. Surely, it's not out of concern that he's doing these things with me. Suddenly, she thought of Lam Na, could it be that he's apologizing on behalf of Lam Na? She turned to Ha Kui then and said, you don't have to do this. Ha Kui then felt skeptical about her cryptic words. Kui Yu Si clarified directly, I know you're doing this to apologize on behalf of Lam, Na. Don't worry, I won't do anything to her. Moreover, you saved me last night, so I'll consider this matter closed. Ha Kui then furrowed his brows upon hearing this. Before he could say anything, Kui Yu Si directly took out a stack of money and placed it on the table. The medicine money from last night should be enough, right, she said. Then immediately headed towards the door. She didn't want any misunderstandings to arise when Lam Na returned. Just as she was about to open the door, Ha Kui then appeared behind her, firmly gripping her shoulders, turning her around and pushing her towards the door with an angry glare. Do you want to bring me and Lam Na together like this? Ha Kui then's eyes blazed with anger. Kui Yu Si didn't understand why he was so angry, and she didn't want to understand. After all, she didn't want to be treated with humiliation like four years ago. Ha Kui then thought, it seems like no matter what I do, she only associates me with Lam Na. He grabbed Kui Yu Si's hand with uncontrolled force. Kui Yu Si cried out in pain. It was only then that Ha Kui then realized, panicked, and released her hand, looking at the red mark on Kui Yu Si's hand. He apologized profusely to Kui Yu Si and wanted to explain that he and Lam Na had no relationship at all. However, before he could finish his sentence, Kui Yu Si interrupted him. She said, I don't care about these things anymore, then turned around and left. Ha Kui then clenched his fists tightly, lacking the courage to chase after her. He hated himself, hated that he couldn't explain clearly, wondering why he couldn't speak up. He had a mouth, he wasn't mute, but he had never spoken clearly. When the girl he liked misunderstood him for liking someone else, he felt nothing but anger and self-hatred. Why couldn't he just tell her directly that she was the one he liked? Kui Yu Si didn't want to get entangled with him, so she turned away directly. Sitting in the car, Kui Yu Si couldn't stop thinking. He should keep his distance from me, but he saved me and showed such concern. What's the real reason behind it? Perhaps in that situation, she couldn't just close her eyes and ignore it. Stop thinking about it. Anyway, I can't come up with an answer. Back at school, Kui Yu Si went to bed, not knowing how long it would take her to fall asleep. When she got up, she found a lunchbox on her bed. It turned out that Duong Hoa saw Kui Yu Si had just returned and was asleep, probably hadn't eaten yet, so she brought food from the canteen to her. Kui Yu Si took a bite, finding it much tastier than usual. She asked Duong Hoa, why does the food from canteen number one taste different? 
am I imagining things? Duong Hoa chuckled and replied, maybe you were too hungry, and started hallucinating. Then she leaned in closer to Kui Yu Si, and shared unbelievable news, Lam Na's boyfriend isn't Mr. Ha. But it's Duong SOC. That's why when I mentioned Ha Kui then as her boyfriend, she clapped her hands. I didn't understand it then, but now I do. Turns out, Lam, Na, just made up being Ha Kui then's girlfriend herself. Kui Yu Si paused, realizing, Lam Na and Ha Kui then don't have any relationship, but whether they do or not doesn't seem to concern me much. In another development, Ha Kui then's phone rang. The message from Duong Hoa, she said to Ha Kui then, Kui Yu Si went to the hospital, the doctor said there's no problem at all. After waking up, she also had her meal. I've also told her about Lam Na, and assured Ha Kui then that she didn't miss a word. Finally, she asked Ha Kui then a question, why did you treat her like that? Ha Kui then fell into deep thought. These two words have been asked of him recently by many, top achievements, being sent to study at a university in the US, and the future prospects at Ha Tea Company. But are these really what he wants? What he truly desires is to keep her where he can always see her. He has never dared to dream that one day he could have her. Until that night, four years ago. That day, he had a few drinks and found an excuse to leave the room. As he turned around, he saw Kui Yu Si staggering out of the restroom. Kui Yu Si smiled and ran towards him, burying her head into Ha Kui Then's chest, before looking up at him. After observing for a while, she called out, Ha, and fell asleep right there. Ha Kui then felt a bit panicked, not knowing what to do. Suddenly, he came up with an idea, remembering that he had booked a room on the upper floor because he was afraid of going home late and being scolded by his parents. He carried Kui Yu Si into his booked room, gently placing her on the bed. As he was about to leave her to rest, Kui Yu Si grabbed his tie, wrapped her arms around his neck, and the two of them fell together. It was the first time he had been so close to her. Her long eyelashes, smooth white skin, everything felt like a dream to him, until the moment they ended, he couldn't believe it. Ha Kui then quickly withdrew his thoughts, forcing himself to stop reminiscing. Even though four years had passed, he still lacked the courage and determination to listen again to her words. He didn't know what to do to love her properly. A few days later, Kui Yu Si went to director Luong's company. She wanted to interview him about his new film. Coincidentally, she ran into Tune there. Back when they were filming Van Tien Fong Hoa, Kui Yu Si and Tune had become somewhat acquainted. When Tune heard that Kui Yu Si wanted to act in director Luong's new film, he felt that she was a perfect fit for the role. Her acting skills were unquestionable. However, since director Luong wasn't present, he asked her to leave her phone number. He promised to text her later. The situation was as it was and she could only wait for a call from Tune. Suddenly, someone called out her name, a voice that was all too familiar to her. If Ha Kui then was the first person she didn't want to meet, then this person was the one she wanted to avoid even more after Ha Kui then. The girl confessed her feelings to the guy who had a crush on her, but he coldly rejected her, saying, even if you were naked in front of me, I wouldn't be interested. Since that day, he had become the first person she didn't want to meet in the world. And the second person she didn't want to meet was her once close friend, the person who had taken everything away from her. Kui Yu Si and TNCA both dreamed of becoming stars. But TNCA was luckier than her. At the age of six, she appeared on the small screen and became known as a child star. Unfortunately, despite TNCA's promising start, she couldn't become a big hit. When they were in high school, she and TNCA made a promise that neither of them would leave the other behind, no matter who became famous. So, for years ago, after Kui Yu Si rose to fame with Tian Van Fong Hoa, she pushed for TNCA to be cast. Later, they acted together in a production. Everyone remembered Kui Yu Si, but no one paid attention to TNCA. Kui Yu Si knew that TNCA was unhappy, so she invited her to join her studio. TNCA only thought that Kui Yu Si hadn't changed, but ultimately, she couldn't understand that TNCA had been stronger than her from the beginning, and her mentality had reversed after becoming weaker than her. 
That evening, she and TNCA went to the cinema. TNCA found an excuse to get off the car midway. At that moment, she didn't think much about it and told the driver to continue driving. Later, she had a car accident. Before losing consciousness, she vaguely saw the driver who caused the accident, seeming to be Ta Tu Dao's boyfriend. During Kui Yusi's coma, TNCA took over her studio, snatched the lead role in her new film. She also generously shared her cake with Ta Tu Dao. Three years later, when Kui Yusi woke up, TNCA had become a big sister in the entertainment industry, while she could only start over from scratch. Struggling at the bottom of society, TNCA's voice suddenly rang out, long time no see, Kui Yusi. Kui Yusi's thoughts were pulled back, pretending as if it didn't matter, but who wouldn't know? That's right, it's been a while, she responded. Then, TNCA began to boast, saying, I've been so busy these past few years. Too busy to care about anything else. You wake up, and I don't even know, TNCA continued. Kui Yusi maintained a smile on her face, as if she hadn't heard TNCA's boasting. TNCA didn't want Kui Yu to leave like that, so she asked, Did you come to see Tune for director Luan's new film? Kui Yu admitted straightforwardly, and seeing this, TNCA began to taunt, Director Luang's films are very challenging, the casting is much stricter than three years ago, and besides, you are no longer the same as you were three years ago. Unfortunately, Kui Yu was not one to be trifled with either. She calmly glanced at TNCA and replied, Of course, the me now aims to become a big name in the entertainment industry. So you should be careful, lest one day I overshadow you. Hearing this, TNCA's face stiffened, and she hastily found an excuse to leave. In the evening, Kui Yusi returned home, and her mother asked her, How is Ha Kui then, dear, holding the nutritious food she bought, saying, Take this to him, dear. Kui Yusi directly refused, saying, I don't know where he is, and I don't have his contact number. Seconds later, her mother took her phone and called Ha Kui then. Kui Yusi felt helpless, but had to comply with her mother's request. She brought the nutritional food to Ha Kui then. But after ringing the doorbell for a while without anyone answering, assuming that Ha Kui then might have gone out, she turned away. Just then, the door opened, and Kui Yusi turned back to see Ha Kui then looking pale, with a continuous cough. Could he be sick? Well, it's none of my business, she thought and walked away. She presented the box of supplements in front of him, but seeing he didn't reach for it, she simply placed it on the ground, saying, it's getting late, I'll leave this here. Before she could take more than two steps, she heard a loud thud. Turning back, she saw Ha Kui then lying on the ground, his face devoid of any blood, but an aura of weakness seemed to spread throughout his body. Kui Yu Si hesitated, unsure if she should care for him. In the end, reason prevailed. His fainting has nothing to do with me. Let him be, she thought. He said he never wants to see me again in his life. There's no need to continue chasing after him. Besides, my task is done. I don't need to concern myself with anything else. Kui Yu Si kept finding excuses for herself, but deep down, it only concealed the turmoil within her. Her hurried footsteps suddenly halted as she recalled the previous night when she fainted on the street due to stomach pain, and it was Ha Kui then who took care of her attentively and brought her home. Still choosing to turn back, she gave Ha Kui then fever-reducing medicine. Helping him onto the bed, as she covered him with a blanket, her hand accidentally brushed against his chest. The scene of her and him that night suddenly flashed in her mind. Her whole body trembled violently, and she quickly withdrew her hand. After what seemed like an eternity, Ha Kui then slowly opened his eyes, surprised to see Kui Yusi lying beside his bed. Before he could even think, Kui Yusi's body slipped off the edge of the bed. Ha Kui then hurriedly reached out, catching Kui Yusi's slipping body, and gently laid her down in a comfortable position. Seeing Kui Yusi sound asleep, a smile unconsciously formed on his lips. He couldn't count how many times this scene had appeared in his dreams, but only in dreams could he dare to hope for Kui Yusi to be by his side. Suddenly, Kui Yusi turned over and nestled into his embrace. Like a kitten nuzzling back and forth, 
Hakuidan's body stiffens, her cheeks blush with shyness. He can't help but hold Kuyusi tightly, whispering into her ear, Don't move, if you move, I can't guarantee your safety. Seeing Kuyusi still nuzzling back and forth, for a moment, he couldn't distinguish whether this was real or a dream. In a daze, he follows Kuyusi's lead, blinking. Hakui then cries out in pain, touching her injured ear. It's only now that he realizes this isn't a dream, he almost unintentionally trapped her in a semi-conscious state. Kuyusi pushes him away with force, her eyes brimming with tears, her mouth pleading, let me go. Seeing this, Hakui then panics, wanting to wipe away her tears. But Kuyusi turns away from the bed, saying, don't touch me. Is he trying to humiliate me like four years ago? Hakui then steps forward, wanting to explain. Kuyusi is so scared that she keeps backing away, yelling loudly, don't come near me. Hakui then, if there were any other way, I wouldn't have brought you anything, and I wouldn't want to appear in front of you. The only reason I stayed to take care of you was to repay the kindness from yesterday. Now that the debt is repaid, please stay away from me. Hearing the mention of the debt being repaid, Hakui then feels like something heavy is stabbing his heart. He clenches his teeth tightly and reaches out again, wanting to help wipe away her tears. But as he approaches a bit closer, Kuyusi forcefully pushes his hand away, angrily admonishing, Mr. Ha, you should remember clearly what I said to you that night four years ago. From start to finish, you only saw me as. Ha Kui then knows what she's about to say, reacting firmly to silence her. Kuyusi continues speaking as if she hadn't heard anything just as you see me as. Ha Kui then is completely infuriated, unexpectedly raising his hand, without any mercy, and striking, towards Kui Yu Si. Instinctively, Kui Yu Si closes her eyes. There's no physical pain, but the voice of Ha Kui then apologizing resonates, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that just now. I'll never come near you again, you don't have to be afraid anymore. Perhaps the previous wound runs too deep, no matter what Ha Kui then says, she doesn't believe, nor want to believe. Instead, she bows her head, coldly and says, I hope we never meet again. After saying that, she decisively leaves, leaving Ha Kui then standing still in place. Remembering Kui Yusi's words, never meet again, can I really do it? The next morning, Kui Yusi looks at the marks on her neck, thinking about everything that happened yesterday. Her mood can't help but plummet. She doesn't know what to do to completely erase him from her life. Suddenly, the phone rings, and it's Tune calling, telling Kui Yu Si to come to the television station for an audition. For Kui Yu Si, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. She immediately hops into a car and heads to the television station. As soon as she steps out of the car, she sees Tune waiting for her, urging her to follow him inside as director Luang is already waiting. The moment the door opens, Kui Yu Si feels pleasantly surprised. Besides director Luang, the other two judges are also seasoned actors. Tune tells her, don't worry, just do your best as usual. Kui Yu Si responds, thank you, I'll seize this opportunity. Kui Yu Si calmly introduces herself. After listening, one of the seasoned actors asks, which role do you want to audition for? Kui Yu Si hesitates for a moment before saying, Tiu Q. Tune is astonished and nods, as Tiu Q is just a supporting role with only five lines. Even director Luang, who is usually reserved, couldn't help but ask for the reason. Kui Yu Si didn't offer much explanation, simply stating, I like this character. Deep down, she knows that the role of Tiu Q is quite different. Tiu Q is a lesbian character driven to madness and ruined by love, ultimately sacrificing herself for it. Despite having few appearances, this character can deliver enough shock, and Kui Yu Si sees it as her first step back into the entertainment industry, aiming to make a memorable impression on the audience. Starting the audition, Kui Yu Si approached the topic, when your beloved says goodbye earnestly, what would you do? She lowered her gaze, pondering for a moment. Then raised her head, suddenly catching a familiar figure, Ha Kui Then. Despite feeling emotionally affected, she knew that today's audition was crucial. Whatever he's doing here has nothing to do with me. Quickly adjusting her emotions and state of mind, 
Kui Yu Si heard the phrase, let's break up. She reached out her hand, wanting to say something, but ultimately couldn't utter a word, slowly bowing her head down and walking in the opposite direction. Just two steps in, she halted, wanting to turn back and look. But she didn't allow herself to glance back, lifting her foot again, taking two steps forward. The black eyes turned red. A tear fell from the corner of the eye. Ha Kui then looked at the scene before him, recalling the many offensive things he had said four years ago. If things hadn't been like that back then, would the outcome have been different? Kui Yusi remained silent throughout the performance, yet conveyed the utmost agony of the farewell scene. The judges were quite satisfied, praising, this is a promising talent. At this moment, Kui Yusi set aside her acting emotions, preparing to bow in gratitude, when the door to the audition room was opened. TNCA stepped in with her assistant. A sudden car accident, her best friend seizing everything she owned, standing triumphantly atop the peak of success. Upon regaining consciousness, she found herself struggling at the bottom of society, longing to rely on her own strength to regain all that was lost, yet her abilities were just recognized. TNCA whispered something to the director's ear, causing his face to fill with disgust. Then he slammed the table and stood up, saying, Tune, come with me outside for a moment. Kui Yusi was astonished, what did TNCA say to make director Luong so angry? Kui Yusi tightened her grip on her hand, feeling the tension and worry that these words might spell trouble for her. Suddenly, the door swung open, and Tune appeared apologetic, I'm sorry, Kui Yusi, but there's been a decision to temporarily remove you from the audition. Kui Yusi stared at Tune wanting to ask something, but she realized that TNCA must have had everything planned beforehand. Otherwise, she wouldn't have let her down at the last minute. Sometimes, avoiding small conflicts can prevent bigger disasters, and if she didn't hold back, she might end up making things worse for herself. Kui Yusi immediately flashed a warm smile and said to Tune, thank you for your help. Tune appeared very apologetic and replied, please don't say that. You have great potential, and I'm sure there will be other opportunities for you in the future. Kui Yusi maintained her smile. After thanking Tune, she politely bowed to the judging panel and calmly left the room. Kui Yusi didn't notice the moment she turned and left, Ha Kui then stood up suddenly and wondered, what happened? Why did she leave suddenly? Approaching the door, TNCA and Director Luong were still in conversation but Kui Yusi pretended not to notice, walking straight to the elevator. Just as the elevator door was about to close, a slender hand reached in. Kui Yusi remained indifferent to her and TNCA leaned in close to Kui Yusi's ear, her tone arrogant, Do you think you're the only one who has changed in the last four years, Kui Yusi? I just said a few words to director Luong, and he immediately removed you from the audition. All you could do was walk away in despair. Do you still want to have a place in the entertainment industry? I'm afraid you can't handle it anymore. Kui Yusi couldn't hold back any longer. She lifted TNCA's chin, pressing her close, what are you afraid of? I just came to audition for a supporting role, and you had to confront me personally. Should I say you lack confidence or you're just pitiful? It seems that whether it's four years ago or four years later, you still fear me the same way. TNCA paled in fear. It wasn't until Kui Yusi turned and left that she regained her composure and called out to Kui Yusi, stop. Aren't you curious about what I just said? Seeing Kui Yusi continue walking, she blurted out, I said you're pregnant. Kui Yusi froze in place, bowing her head as cold tears streamed down her cheeks. Observing this, TNCA became even more arrogant. For years ago, pregnant before marriage. She thinks the director would cast someone who's unknown and embroiled in a scandal? Moreover, just casually revealing it to someone in the industry would naturally lead to everyone shunning her. It must be said that TNCA has given her quite a dilemma. She's right, no matter how good my acting skills are, no one would dare to collaborate with me. TNCA approached Kui Yusi, arrogantly placing her hand on Kui Yusi's shoulder, your glorious days are over, you're not worthy of being my rival now. Not now, and not in the future. 
Kui Yu Si forcefully pushed her hand away, looking at her with a fierce glare. Do you think you can manipulate my emotions so easily? Just because I get married. Doesn't that make it all easier to resolve? Furthermore, there's a chance to shine even brighter. Wait for the audience's attention, then file for divorce. Killing two birds with one stone. TNCA widened her eyes in astonishment, thinking, is this really Kui Yu Si? Kui Yu Si's expression grew even more fierce. The accident three years ago couldn't kill me, and three years later, you can wait to be crushed underfoot, she said sharply before turning and walking away. TNCA, reacting angrily, wanted to chase after her. She was then pulled back by a large hand. Is everything you just said true? Did she once get pregnant? She looked closely at Ha Kui then, feeling extremely complicated. After all these years, the first thing he says to me is still about Kui Yu Si. After a moment, she blinked gently. Apart from asking about her, do you have nothing to say to me? Ha Kui then firmly responded, yes. A glimmer of hope appeared in TNCA's eyes, but before three seconds had passed, Ha Kui then's cold voice rang out, stay away from her. TNCA gritted her teeth in anger, shouting, is this intentional? You clearly know that I like you, yet every word you say brings up Kui Yu Si. Ha Kui then chuckled coldly. Do you overestimate yourself? You're not worthy. Since the day we met, she's been stronger than you. And there will come a day when wherever she is, she'll be the center of attention. If she's not at the peak, I'll help her get there. These words completely stirred up TNCA, she clutched Ha Kui then's shoulder tightly, she was pregnant, and it's yours. For years ago, Kui Yu Si discovered she was pregnant, but upon visiting the hospital, it was revealed to be an ectopic pregnancy. With no other choice, she had to terminate the pregnancy. However, TNCA want Ha Kui then to know about this. TNCA's worst nightmare is seeing Ha Kui then treating Kui Yu Si kindly. With this in mind, she smirked and said, but that pregnancy is long gone. The moment Kui Yu Si found out she was pregnant, she immediately went for an abortion. Kui Yu Si doesn't want the child, and he gave up the top-ranked university to pursue a career in B-Cinema for a woman like her. Even his presence here today is because of her. He believes that if he does so much for her, will she appreciate it? Will she be grateful? Ha Kui then remained calm. Stating that everything he did was voluntary, and he never demanded that she accept or appreciate it. He simply said, it's none of your concern, before walking away. TNCA, shouting from behind, exclaimed, what's the point of doing that? You must know that if it weren't for your brother, Ha Du Kuang, you wouldn't stand a chance in front of her. Upon hearing the name, Ha Du Kuang, Ha Kui Thant's body trembled violently. Remembering the confession night four years ago, Kui Yu Si called him, Ha Du Kuang. From start to finish, she always thought he was Ha Du Kuang. He also remembered the first time he met Kui Yu Si, on that day with bright sunshine, he leaned comfortably on the bench. Behind him, he heard a conversation between a few girls, what if you run into gangsters when you're out alone? Some said, call the police, others said, shout for help and some said, running is the best option. Only Kui Yu Si uttered shocking words, each person gets one punch. Ha Kui then didn't expect someone to share the same thought as him. In that moment, he turned around, and a graceful figure with long hair caught his eye. Kui Yu Si's smile was like the spring sunlight shining on Ha Kui then, who stood up to move forward, but was blocked by the chubby guy who had bought a coke. After pushing the chubby guy aside, Kui Yu Si was no longer there. Since that day, Ha Kui then stood at the balcony every day, searching for that figure. Finally, Kui Yu Si appeared. Ha Kui then rushed down the stairs, but by the time he reached there, Kui Yu Si was gone. He stood there for a while, wondering, when will I get the chance to get to know you? In the evening, when Ha Kui then returned home, he was about to go upstairs to rest when his mother called him back, wanting to introduce someone to him. This is the daughter of my best friend, she goes to the same school as you, her name is Kui Yu Si. In that moment, Ha Kui then didn't know how happy he felt. 
The girl he had been longing for over the past month appeared before him like this. To be able to meet Kuyusi, the person who rarely came home suddenly started to return home on time every day. After that, he discovered that Kuyusi liked his older brother more. Her called Ha Du Kuang brother, Ha Du Kuang, while referring to him as a classmate. His brother also didn't call her Kuyusi, but instead referred to her as Man Man. As Ha Kui then regained his composure, he found himself following Kuyusi to the riverbank almost involuntarily. Watching Kuyusi's hair tousled by the wind, he felt a deep sense of sorrow. He dared not imagine how Kuyusi would feel upon learning about her pregnancy, or how frightened she must have been during the surgery. A moment later, Kuyusi sat down, picking up a stone to write something on the surface of the bridge. Seeing this, Ha Kui then thought Kuyusi might be feeling cold, and he worried she might catch a cold. He wanted to approach her, but he felt he lacked the right and the courage. He could only stand there quietly, not too far away. It wasn't until late at night that Kuyusi stood up and left. Ha Kui then also followed her, then saw the words Kuyusi wrote, in Ha Du Kuang, Man Man both are you, Ha Kui then's heart gently ached. He knew these were the words his brother wrote for her, but so what? His name also contained her surname. Despite his wounded heart, Ha Kui then couldn't leave Kuyusi alone. He hurriedly chased after her, sitting down behind her. At that moment, the song Du on Hai Nim echoed in the background. Kui Yusi drank from one glass to another without realizing how much she had consumed. She staggered, attempting to stand up, but ended up falling forward. In this crucial moment, Ha Kui then pulled her back, carefully embracing her and carrying her outside. Ha Kui then felt alarmed by Kui Yusi's murmurs. He felt like she was trapped in a difficult situation, and he became worried for her. He decided he couldn't just stand by and do nothing, he had to do something to help her. Thinking that taking her back to the dormitory first would give her time to think and deal with the situation more soberly, he opened the car door placing Kuyusi inside, and was about to stand up when Kuyusi suddenly hugged him tightly. I have someone I want to marry, it's been many years already, she whispered. Ha Kui then let go of Kui Yu Si and said, You don't have to say anything. I've known for a long time that you have someone you want to marry. The young man clearly cares for the girl, but when she confessed her feelings to him, he coldly pushed her away. It's because he always knew that the girl's affection wasn't for him, but for his brother, Ha Du Kuang. However, even so, he couldn't let go of Kui Yu Si, seeing her drinking alone to drown her sorrows, he quietly sat behind her escorting Kui Yusi home when she got drunk. It was already early morning, Ha Kui then stood on the empty street, suddenly remembering the night four years ago when he and Kui Yusi were together. He also stood on the street like this. But back then, what echoed in his ears was Kui Yusi lying beneath him, constantly calling him Ha Du Kuang. What he was thinking about was Kui Yusi's words, I don't want to get married, but I can only get married. He didn't know how long he stood there. Ha Kui then finally drove away, but he didn't go home. Instead, he went to the private cemetery of the Ha family. Holding a bouquet of white and yellow chrysanthemums in his hand, he walked deeper into the cemetery. In front of a gravestone. He knelt down, placing the fresh bouquet in front of the gravestone, slowly lifting his head to look at the black and white photo on the tombstone. Brother, it's been a while since we last met. I've come to visit you here. How have you been? He knew no one would answer, but he still spoke to his brother, saying, I'm doing fine, and she's doing well too. She's awake now, doing the work she loves. Then, speaking to himself and listening to his own words, he asked his brother, Do you want to get to know someone again? Ha Kui then paused for three seconds after saying this, then continued, I do. With just three words spoken, he fell into silence. In his youth, he was full of confidence. Thinking that one day he would surpass his brother in Kui Yusi's heart. But by that night, he realized that reality remained as it was. Ultimately, his confidence amounted to nothing. Looking at the picture of his older brother in front of him, Ha Kui then's thoughts were drawn back to that year. After he and Kui Yusi got to know each other, despite often teasing her to anger, he always stood behind to protect her. One day, Ha Kui then went to an internet cafe, 
and when the chubby guy saw him, he immediately suspected and stepped forward, aren't you supposed to be on a date with the beauty queen? Why are you here? Ha Kui then turned around and told him, don't do this, I don't need it. Suddenly, a familiar voice slipped into his ears, and he turned around, surprised to see Kui Yu see. At that moment, a few thugs approached, looking down at Kui Yu see, while pretending to accidentally stumble over something then leaning into Kui Yu Si as an opportunity to strike up a conversation with her. Ha Kui then immediately exuded a strong aura and instructed the chubby guy to call the Tun brothers upstairs for a chat. Hearing Ha Kui then's invitation, the Tun brothers reluctantly instructed their subordinates to entertain themselves, while they obediently followed Ha Kui then upstairs. Seeing Ha Kui then, the Tun brothers extended his hand with a flattering tone, Mr. Then, if you don't mind, let's be friends. Ha Kui then, seeing those hands, remembered the recent scene and forcefully twisted the wrist of the Tun. He winced in pain and stepped back. Then, Ha Kui then raised his leg and kicked the Tun away, he immediately screamed in pain. Ha Kui then's eyes were as cold as ice as he ordered him, shut up, afraid of disturbing Kui Yu Si. Before he could react, he was grabbed by the collar by Ha Kui then, who told him why he was being beaten, the girl you just touched is someone I protect. It's best you stay away from her, understand? If there's another time, I'm sure I'll finish you, Ha Kui then warned, sternly. The Tun guy dared not say anything more, shamefully leading his gang away. At that moment, Ha Kui then heard Kui Yu see coughing, so he immediately instructed his friends to escort the guests near the girl with a coke up to the second floor telling them, I'll cover the net fee. After that, extinguish the cigarettes. From that day on, whenever Kui Yu Si appeared in the net cafe, there were always familiar faces around her. Later on, Kui Yu Si learned that they were all associates of Ha Kui Than. At that time, Ha Kui Than and Kui Yu Si weren't close, and they rarely spoke to each other. However, Ha Kui Than's friends knew that Kui Yu Si was someone special to him. At first, Kui Yu Si thought that being protected at the internet cafe was good enough, but little did she know that it was just the beginning. When Kui Yu Si casually complained to Ha Du Kuang about the difficulty of high school level knowledge, Ha Kui then immediately helped her organize a stack of books and notes. With Ha Kui then's intervention, Kui Yu Si's life changed significantly. She never had to wait in line to get hot water anymore. The best seat in the cafeteria was always reserved for her. Even duty shifts were never assigned to her. The strangest thing was when a classmate told Kui Yu Si that the road to her home was the only one without streetlights, making it unsafe for female students, and miraculously, the next day, the streetlights suddenly appeared on that road. Later on, Kui Yu Si found out that it was all done by Ha Kui then, but she couldn't understand why he did it. Therefore, one day, as she descended the stairs to pour water, Kui Yu Si overheard Ha Kui then conversing with Ha Du Kuang. Knowing that everything was orchestrated by Ha Du Kuang through him, Kui Yu Si couldn't help but feel heartened, Ha Du Kuang always remained so caring. By chance, Ha Kui then stumbled upon Kui Yu Si's diary, realizing that Kui Yu Si always believed that everything he did was at his brother's behest. He deeply regretted his words. Why did he say that at that moment? Just then, Kui Yu Si opened the door and walked in, noticing the diary in Ha Kui Than's hand. She questioned loudly, What are you doing here? Ha Kui Than replied hesitantly, Nothing. I'm just helping you and your brother tidy up the table. He quickly changed the subject, asking her, Why are you looking for my brother? Kui Yu Si smiled brightly, showing off her performance costume. Today, I'm performing a solo dance at the school anniversary celebration and I'll dedicate this dance to Ha Du Kuang to celebrate his birthday. She asked him to inform Ha Du Kuang that she needed to check the stage beforehand. Ha Kui then suddenly became gloomy. We are obviously twins, and today is also my birthday, so why only invite my brother? In the evening, the chubby guy took Ha Kui then to a karaoke bar, saying, The guys have prepared a surprise for you, you'll love it for sure. When they opened the door, Ha Kui then froze. Why is Kui Yu Si here? Isn't she supposed to perform tonight? Just as she was about to speak up, she saw Kui Yu Si stand up and walk towards her with a beer glass in hand, 
he was eagerly anticipating, thinking that she might have him in her heart, so he was especially looking forward to her coming over to wish him a happy birthday. However, his anticipation lasted less than two seconds before the entire glass of beer was thrown straight into his face. Ha Kui then stood frozen in shock, lifting his head to see Kui Yusi's face filled with disgust, I had high expectations of you, thinking you were a responsible person. But I never expected you to force someone to bring me back here. Do you think that's cool? But in my eyes, it's just disgusting. The younger siblings, upon hearing Kui Yusi's words, immediately felt resentful towards Ha Kui then. Suddenly, Ha Kui then spoke up, commanding them, shut up, with a cold and somewhat intimidating tone, the room suddenly became quiet. Ha Kui then clenched his teeth and asked, who brought her here? The chubby guy scratched his head, unable to explain anything before Ha Kui then demanded apologies from them all. After the last person apologized, Ha Kui then stepped back. Kui Yusi didn't even glance at him, walking past him coldly. After Kui Yusi left, Ha Kui then leaned back on the sofa. Continuously recalling what had just happened, he felt like pushing her further away once again. Unsure of how to get closer to her, he stood up and walked out of the door, intending to take a breath of fresh air, but then he heard someone calling Kui Yusi's name. Startled, he looked up and saw someone harassing Kui Yusi. Seeing her being held by those ton guys, forced to perform, Ha Kui then hurriedly ran over. In a pivotal moment, Ha Kui then managed to catch Kui Yusi just as she was about to fall. Seeing that it was Ha Kui then, the ton guys panicked and ran away. Unexpectedly, Ha Kui then caught one of them and tightly grabbed his collar, his grip fierce. Seems like you've really forgotten quickly, huh? With a swift kick, he sent the guy tumbling to the ground, forcing him to apologize to Kui Yusi. At that moment, the Tun guy's crew emerged, witnessing their leader being attacked. Without hesitation, they charged forward. Ha Kui then swiftly retaliated, quickly subduing the two attackers. After adjusting his hair, he approached Kui Yusi and asked, Are you scared? The Tun guys grabbed a bottle of liquor, trembling as they stood up suddenly appearing behind Ha Kui then. Kui Yusi, startled, widened her eyes, and shouted, Ha Kui then, behind you. Ha Kui then reacted immediately, turning around and grabbing the guy's arm, forcefully pushing him forward, seizing his neck and throwing him in front of Kui Yusi, demanding him to apologize. The Tun guy began to plead for forgiveness, Kui Yusi, didn't pay any attention to him. But walked straight past him to stand in front of Ha Kui then. Her eyes showed concern as she grabbed Ha Kui then's hand and pulled him outside. Ha Kui then felt a bit puzzled and asked, What are you doing? Go see the wound, but your brother is still waiting for you. I don't care anymore, let's go to the hospital first, brother, do you know? This is the first time she's worried about me like this. It's also the first time I've felt like I've won against you. After that day, we became closer. We went to school together every day and went home together after school. She also began to get used to my care, but we still gradually drifted apart. One time in class, Kui Yusi came to Ha Kui then's desk, tapping it to wake him up. She awkwardly said to him, after school, meet me at the small forest, behind the school, okay? After saying that, she quickly ran away. Ha Kui then felt a bit confused, wondering, is this our first date? Inside, he couldn't help but feel a bit hopeful, especially since he wore a brand new outfit. He arrived at the small forest and waited eagerly from early on, but the one who arrived was not Kui Yusi, but her best friend. TNCA Ha Kui then couldn't believe it, blurting out, where's Kui Yusi? TNCA seemed a bit hesitant, replying, she went home. I'm the one who arranged to meet you. Hearing this, Ha Kui then's expression turned icy and frighteningly cold. He didn't even bother looking at TNCA and just walked away. For Ha Kui then, he could tolerate anything Kui Yusi did, but this one thing he couldn't bear. The girl he loved was trying to set him up with someone else. Upon arriving home, Ha Kui then immediately saw Kui Yusi and her brother happily joking around. Upon hearing the door open, Kui Yusi looked up. Seeing Ha Kui then, Kui Yusi, curious, asked him, why did you come back so quickly? 
If she hadn't asked, it would have been fine. As soon as she asked, Ha Kuivan's anger immediately flared up. He strode towards Kui Yusi and said, Do you find it amusing to behave like this? Don't play such boring games in the future. The girl Ha Kui then had secretly loved for many years, not only liked his older brother, but also actively introduced him to others. Unable to bear it any longer, he stepped forward to confront her. Do you find it amusing to behave like this? Faced with Ha Kui then's sudden outburst, Kui Yusi was puzzled. But since this incident, they fell into a state of cold war. No one cared about anyone anymore. On the night after the university entrance exam, Kui Yusi excitedly ran towards Ha Kui then and told him, I like you. Only heaven knows how content and happy he felt at that moment. The girl he longed for had finally become his. But heaven and hell are often separated by a thin line. In their happiest moment, Kui Yusi called him Ha Du Kuang. Ha Kui then was utterly shocked. It turned out that everything belonged not to him, but to his older brother, Ha Du Kuang. He didn't know how to face such memories, so he chose to run away. On the third day after he and Kui Yusi started their relationship, Kui Yusi sent a message to Ha Du Kuang, arranging to meet him at 8 p.m. in Lac Van Square. Upon seeing the message, Ha Kui then immediately replied, understood, but he didn't tell his brother about this, and he even deleted the message. He knew he shouldn't have done that, but he was afraid his brother would marry Kui Yusi. From then on, he could never bring himself to contact her again. That evening, Ha Kui then disguised himself as his brother and went to the encounter. Hearing Kui Yusi's confession to his brother, he truly wanted to say, I like you too. And I'm willing to be your boyfriend, but he knew very well that this confession was not meant for him. At that moment, he felt a surge of jealousy that drove him almost mad, unable to control himself any longer, releasing the beast trapped within his body, revealing his true identity. At that moment, he knew that Kui Yusi was overjoyed to believe that it was Ha Du Kuang that night, but he was still merciless, destroying her illusions, crushing her self-esteem madly. He pushed Kui Yusi further away. Because if he didn't do that, Kui Yusi would forever belong to Ha Du Kuang, and he would just be a background character in their happy life. If that were the case, he would rather die, suddenly, a reminder message echoed, bringing Ha Kui Thence thoughts back. It was from Duong Hoa. She told him, Kui Yusi wants to meet for a blind date, then sent him the address. Ha Kui then was somewhat surprised, not expecting Kui Yusi to act so swiftly. TNCA's situation from just a day ago, she had decided she wanted to get married. Touching his brother's photo, he didn't know what to do. I've already done so many wrong things, so I don't know if I can still be with Kui Yusi. Will Kui Yusi forgive me? But I really don't want to lose her, I, I will support you. If I could, I really want to become you, even though I couldn't speak since I was young. But whether it's Kui Yusi or Mom, they all only like you. I still remember the day you passed away, Mom holding on to your photo tightly, constantly saying, why did the one who died have to be my child? Perhaps by becoming you, I'll gain love. Unconsciously, Ha Kui then drove to the place where Kui Yusi was going to meet. Seeing Kui Yusi and the person she was meeting sharing the same umbrella, chatting and laughing, Ha Kui then suddenly collapsed, unable to resist honking the horn. Kui Yusi turned to look and saw Ha Kui then not far away. She didn't understand why he was here. Ha Kui then didn't say much, just opened the door directly to take her back to school. Kui Yusi firmly refused, this gentleman will take me home, you go ahead. She said, then went straight to the man's car. Watching the car gradually move away, Ha Kui Thant's face became grim. The first time we meet, she casually gets into someone else's car. Does she really want to find just anyone? As long as it's not me, anyone will do, thinking about everything that has happened since they met again. She always tried to keep her distance from him, whether it was four years ago or four years later. The person she needed was never him. But he couldn't turn a blind eye to her, because he was marrying someone else to break TNCA's trap. What should he do in the end? What can he do to keep her? Is it only by becoming her brother that he can be by her side? Suddenly, he seemed to think of something. He took out his mobile phone, 
and after turning it on, the image of Ha Du Kuang and Man Man appeared. He muttered to himself, Elder brother, can I really do this? That year, his older brother passed away, but his mother couldn't accept it, so she didn't publicly announce the news of his death and instead used his brother's phone to post updates. Until now, Kui Yu Si still didn't know that he was no longer alive. He had vehemently opposed his mother's decision. He never thought that he would have to rely on this fact now to have a chance to be by Kui Yu Si's side. In another development, Kui Yu Si's phone rang. Opening it, she was surprised to see a message from Ha Du Kuang asking to meet her tomorrow. Kui Yu Si was stunned for a while, not knowing how to face Ha Du Kuang. After all, she had left without saying goodbye that year, and even did that with his younger brother. But that was four years ago, and perhaps it was time to let go. Consider it as old friends meeting up. Finally, she agreed to meet him, at noon the next day, as Kui Yu Si stepped into the cafe, she immediately spotted Ha Du Kuang sitting by the window. He still had that gentle demeanor, like a ray of light that captivated everyone's attention. Just as Ha Kui then turned her head, she caught the gaze of Kui Yu Si. He admired him greatly thinking, indeed, she's only infatuated with my brother. That look was never meant for me. Kui Yu Si also had some doubts, just now, she thought she saw a glimpse of Ha Kui then in Ha Du Kuang's eyes. Upon reflection, she found it impossible. How could Ha Kui then calmly sit down and talk to her like this, then, a radiant smile appeared on her face as she asked, How have you been these past few years, Ha Du Kuang? Ha Kui then nodded and replied, tapping on her phone, I've been doing quite well, and you? Kui Yu Si kept a smile on her lips and said, I've been doing pretty well too. Ha Kui then was surprised to find that in front of her brother, she completely let her guard down. Very well, how could I possibly live well? Clearly, you brought me a lot of trouble, she thought to herself. Suddenly, Kui Yu Si's phone rang, and she hesitated, saying, Sorry, Ha Du Kuang, before answering the call, the matchmaking company called and asked her, Are you free this weekend? We're arranging a new blind date for you. Due to the loud volume, Ha Kui then heard the entire conversation, and his expression darkened, despite his efforts to relax. He told himself not to overthink it. He couldn't restrain his own emotions. Placing the phone on the table, he asked Kui Yu Si, Do you have a blind date? Kui Yu Si was startled, although it was the tone of Ha Du Kuang, it resembled the behavior of Ha Kui then. Clearly facing Ha Du Kuang, but in her mind, it was all about Ha Kui then. Ha Kui then felt uneasy and quickly typed an explanation. Sorry, I accidentally overheard your phone call. Kui Yu Si didn't want to dwell on unpleasant matters anymore, simply stating, I'm in trouble, only marriage can solve it. After speaking, she glanced at Ha Du Kuang, feeling that her current self would surely disappoint him. As soon as her eyes met Ha Kui Thans, Kui Yu Si instinctively lowered her head. She didn't know when it started, but she felt uncomfortable in front of Ha Du Kuang, even wanting to escape. Kui Yu Si couldn't resist anymore, pushing her chair back and getting up, intending to say she had to leave and schedule another meeting. But then she saw Ha Kui then take out his phone and write, If you need to find a marriage partner, you can consider me. Kui Yu Si said nothing, just stood there dumbfounded. This was clearly the scene she had imagined every day as a teenager, and now that it was actually happening, why did she feel a sense of bitterness that couldn't be described? At this moment, Ha Kui then was also very confused. He hoped she would agree, yet he yearned for her rejection, after all, the person marrying her wasn't me, but my brother. Kui Yu Si remained silent, while Ha Kui then typed, wait for me to resolve my issues. This marriage can be annulled at any time. Please consider it carefully first, and then let me know after you've made up your mind. That night, Kui Yu Si tossed and turned in turmoil. She considered Ha Du Kuang to be a perfect person, while she had done that with Ha Kui then. How could she be worthy of Ha Du Kuang? Yet, she still wanted that beauty, even if it was fleeting. In the end, she sent a message to Ha Du Kuang, agreeing to his proposal. After reading the message, Ha Kui then replied, Okay, and then instructed Kui Yu Si, send me your household registration book. I've already contacted the Tatan Civil Affairs Bureau. 
I'll handle the marriage registration process myself. Kui Yusi knew that the Ha family had significant influence in Tatan, so this task wouldn't be difficult. Without any hesitation or doubt, Kui Yusi handed over her household registration book to Ha Kui, then, to handle everything. Five days later, Kui Yusi received a package from Tatan, containing her and Ha Du Kuang's marriage registration certificate. She opened it and glanced at it for a moment before taking a photo with her phone and telling Ha Du Kuang, I've received it. Ha Du Kuang immediately replied, saying, Both my parents are abroad. Once they return, I'll take you to meet them. Kui Yusi thought it was fine this way, considering their marriage was just contractual. Perhaps when Ha's parents returned, the marriage would come to an end. Ha Kui then didn't ask her any more, but looked at the marriage photo with a sense of dizziness. Finally, he managed to marry the girl he loved, albeit under another man's name. Perhaps Kui Yusi would never know that the marriage certificate she received was paid for by him, with 500 renminbi, to find someone to forge it. That evening, Kui Yusi called her assistant, too, and said, The miscarriage incident is true, but the marriage is also true. Although the entertainment industry prohibits pregnancy before marriage, it doesn't rule out getting married first and then getting pregnant. Too highly valued Kui Yusi and appreciated her honesty, so he immediately replied, Tomorrow, you come to the studio, I will help you explain clearly to the director. After hanging up the phone, Kui Yusi walked to the dormitory door and coincidentally met Lam Na on her way back. Lam Na completely ignored Kui Yusi and walked past her warmly, greeting the other two roommates. When Duang Hoa asked Tu Na, Are you staying in the dormitory? Tu Na appeared visibly flustered and stuttered, No, tomorrow the teacher is going to look for her. I was afraid I wouldn't wake up in time, so I came back here to sleep for one night. Early the next morning, as Kui Yusi stepped out of the dormitory, Lam Na immediately took out her phone to send a text message, but it was unclear who she was messaging. At that moment, Kui Yusi noticed two men in black eyeing her. Before she could react, one of them swiftly covered her mouth and lifted her off the ground. Despite her struggles, she couldn't break free from their grasp. The men in black carried Kui Yusi into an abandoned teaching building and tied her to a chair. Kui Yusi couldn't comprehend what was happening until she heard the sound of the door locking behind her. It dawned on her that they had planned this meticulously. Regardless of their intentions, she had to make it to the film set before 9 a.m. or risk losing her role as Tu Q. Thinking quickly, Kui Yusi realized something. Tu Q role, who would want me to lose it the most? Definitely TNCA, as predicted, Lam Na was talking to TNCA, saying, Kui Yusi has been locked in the abandoned classroom. No one will discover her for a while. So, for the role of Xiao Chui, it all depends on Miss TNCA's assistance, Lam Na said. Because of her desire to trample her best friend underfoot, she immediately instructed someone to kidnap her best friend, preventing her from auditioning for the role thus ruining her chance to enter the entertainment industry. Meanwhile, she could stand tall at the pinnacle, watching her friend struggle at the bottom of society, originally thought the issue had been resolved, but unexpectedly Ha Kui then continued to be concerned about it. Seeing that the appointed time had arrived and Kui Yusi still hadn't appeared, a sense of unease suddenly crept into her heart. Without hesitation, she took out her phone and texted Duong Hoa. Duong Hoa replied to the message, Kui Yusi left at 5 o'clock. And Lam Na went with her. Ha Kui then immediately panicked, but he knew the importance of this role to Kui Yusi. Hastily, he went to meet the director Luong and said to him, Something has happened to Kui Yusi. I hope you can shoot other scenes first. I'll go there to see what's going on, director Luong responded, Regardless, apart from Kui Yusi, I haven't found any actor suitable for the role of Tu Q. Although I highly value Kui Yusi, I also don't appreciate tardiness. He believed that Ha Kui then was making excuses for Kui Yusi, trying to find reasons to decline. However, his assistant, too, intervened and assured director Luong, Kui Yusi is not someone who is typically late. Something might have indeed happened. I hope director Luong can give Kui Yusi one last chance. Director Luong pondered for a moment and agreed to shoot the other scenes first, instructing Ha Kui then, then you go quickly. 
Upon hearing this, Hakui then turned and hurried away, rushing towards the parking lot. Thinking about Lam Na following Kui Yusi outside, it was evident that she was monitoring her. Now that Kui Yusi was not present on the film set, it was surely related to Lam Na. It must be because of what happened at the hot spring villa, Lam Na still harbored resentment and wanted revenge on Kui Yusi. However, Lam Na didn't know which taxi Kui Yusi had taken, so she couldn't have teamed up with the driver. If she wanted to act, she could only do so within the school grounds. With these thoughts in mind, Ha Kui then quickly got into his car, pressing the accelerator towards Film Studio B. At that moment, Lam Na carefully took out her new purse, thinking, if I can secure the role of Tu Q, I'll be able to pay for this purse in installments. She was thrilled at the thought, but her joy was short-lived as the door of the dorm room was immediately kicked open. Lam Na, enraged, looked towards the door, about to unleash a string of curses, when she saw Ha Kui then storming in, grabbing her by the arm and furiously interrogating her. Where is she? Where are you hiding her? Tell me, where is Kui Yusi? Ha Kui then demanded, his voice filled with urgency, Lam Na, fearing exposure, thought, my plan was flawless, no third party knew about this. How could he possibly know that Kui Yusi's disappearance is related to me? Is it just a guess? She suppressed her fear and replied, Ha, what are you talking about? Ha Kui then's eyes flashed with hostility as he snatched the purse from her hand. Lam Na was taken aback, unsure of his intentions, seeing Ha Kui then open the window to throw away the bag, Lam Na hurriedly stepped forward to stop him. Ha Kui then shouted, Where is Kui Yusi? Right now, tell me the truth. Before he could finish, Lam Na, overcome with fear, burst into tears and sobbed, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. She's in the abandoned lecture hall. Without another word, Ha Kui then rushed out of the dormitory. In another development, Kui Yusi didn't know how long she had been held captive, but she was certain that it was already late. Feeling uneasy, Kui Yusi gritted her teeth once again and used a piece of glass to rub against the rope, binding her hands. The pain penetrated her heart immediately, spreading throughout her body, causing her to break out in cold sweat. But after a while, her hand became so painful that she couldn't move it anymore. The determination in her eyes gradually faded away, replaced by endless sadness. Could it be that I have to lose to TNCA again this time? She thought to herself. Suddenly, there was a rapid knocking on the door from outside, followed by a loud bang. Kui Yusi looked up in astonishment, her eyes slowly moving along the leather shoes, a familiar face appearing within sight. It's Ha Kui then, why is he here? Seeing Kui Yusi lying on the ground, her face filled with pain, Ha Kui then quickly knelt down to help her up. This action brought them closer together. Sweat could be seen clearly on Ha Kui then's face. First, he gently peeled off the adhesive tape. Then, he proceeded to untie the rope around Kui Yusi's wrist. Just before his fingertips touched the rope, he noticed the red marks on the rope and the worn-out rope tightly bound to her wrist. His hand trembled uncontrollably. His heart began to ache. In the moment of untying the rope, Ha Kui then gently lifted Kui Yusi's hand. A look of concern appeared on his face, reminding Kui Yusi of a moment five years ago when he was equally worried about her. It was just that back then they were still friends. But now, even a stranger might feel closer. Thinking this, Kui Yusi quickly withdrew her hand and said, Thank you, to Ha Kui, then. I still have something to attend to, so I must leave now. As she stood up, she staggered and almost fell. Ha Kui then quickly reached out to support her. Kui Yusi instinctively stepped back two paces. But considering that she wanted to invite him for a meal as a gesture of gratitude, she hesitated. Then she remembered Ha Kui Thant's words advising her not to appear before him again. So, she hastily added, Thanks to you this time, I want to invite you for a meal, but I won't be there. I'll ask Lai Dat to invite you instead. Ha Kui then suddenly paused, turning away, no need. I came here only because I accidentally found out that you were locked up by Lam, Na. Moreover, if it weren't for me, Lam Na wouldn't have treated you like this. Don't you want to enter the entertainment industry? If you don't even have the most basic vigilance towards others, 
what business do you have in the entertainment industry? That's the truth. These words always seem to hurt so much when they come from his mouth. Seeing Kui Yu Si remain silent, Ha Kui then felt even more frustrated, and he blurted out. Isn't there something urgent you need to attend to? If not, then hurry up and leave. Why stay here any longer? Kui Yu Si felt as though she had been jolted awake. Enduring the pain in her wrists, she picked up the bag from the floor and ran away from this dark place, seeing Kui Yu Si's silhouette. Ha Kui then felt uneasy. What had happened to him? Why did he always push her away? When Kui Yu Si arrived at the film set, there was no one around. Checking the time, she realized she was already an hour late. Just as she was disappointed that luck was not on her side for the role of Tu Q, Tune called out her name. Kui Yu Si turned around and apologized to Tune, but before she could finish, Tune interrupted her. The scenes with Tu Q will be filmed in the afternoon. Go sign the contract first, then prepare for makeup and styling. Kui Yu Si was surprised that the director wasn't disappointed in her. You should thank the assistant director. He regrets your talent being wasted, so he explained it. Director Luong pushed it to the afternoon session, why did the assistant director? After finishing the makeup, Kui Yu Si sat quietly to immerse herself in a better character, but the whispers around her made it hard to concentrate. They were discussing, the assistant director of the young and talented film crew has quite a background. His first directorial work won an award. No wonder the director appointed him as the assistant director. I heard he's still in college. Hearing this, Kui Yu Si became somewhat interested. She really liked this film and now she was intrigued by this director, not expecting him to be a young genius. Just then, a staff member announced, everyone, get ready, we're about to start filming. Kui Yu Si stood up upon hearing that and walked to the filming location. As she faced the director, the assistant director approached. Passing by Kui Yu Si, he intentionally pulled his cap down, only revealing his face after sitting down beside the monitor and putting on his headphones. With the call of action, a woman in yellow appeared in front of the camera, looking despondent. Suddenly, someone grabbed her hand and pulled her away. How did you get in here? Tu Q hastily covered her mouth. Now that the guards are changing shifts, it's the best chance to take you away. The girl pushed her hand away. Tu Q, I've already come this far into this room, I can't think of escaping anymore. Tu Q replied, Are you truly resigned to being trapped here forever? What about me? Do you want to abandon me? Will you follow me first? We can talk after we leave here. Tu Q, you go ahead. I can't go with you. Tu Q couldn't believe it, her hand that was holding hers fell limp. Even if it's for my own good, please don't come looking for me anymore. Tears immediately welled up in Tu Q's eyes, accompanied by thunderous sobs, disregarding the rain falling on her face. At that moment, the assistant ran over and asked, Director, should we continue? Continue. Today's efficiency has been low. Let's shoot the rain scene first, it's raining now. Tu Q, out of love and hate, will commit suicide in the rain. Let Kui Yu see, prepare herself a bit. We'll shoot this scene shortly. Ha Kui then felt a bit worried, we already had an incident this morning, and now it's raining again. Will her body withstand it? The director's call resounded, and Tu Q stood under the rain once again, her face filled with despair. Just after reading two lines of dialogue, she felt her blood rushing down, momentarily distracting her. Director, Kui Yu see, what's wrong? Did you forget your lines? Quickly adjusting her state and trying again, this time Kui Yu Si didn't reveal her wrists, but instead chose to directly draw out a dagger and stab it forcefully into her heart. Tu Q fell to the ground, struggling to say, Take me away, see you in the next life. But when the lens captured Kui Yu Si's hand holding the knife, Ha Kui then clearly saw that there was not only fake blood used as a prop, but also real blood from her. Is her wrist wound that serious already? Is she deviating from the script because she's afraid of revealing her wrist injury? But why isn't she providing any feedback to the film crew? Ha Kui then pondered these questions silently, feeling deeply unsettled by what he had just witnessed. Upon hearing the director's feedback and the command to cut, 
Ha Kui Than's unexpected presence surprised Kui Yu Si. Ha Kui Than? I didn't expect you to be the assistant director, she thought to herself. If it were Ha Du Kuang, perhaps he could make me let go of my guard against him. Then I'd be willing to emulate a flawless Ha Du Kuang, Ha Kui then pretended not to notice anything and coldly remarked, I've seen it. The performance just now had no issues. A bit of post-processing will be sufficient. Director Luong, upon hearing Ha Kui Than's words, didn't insist on his own thoughts anymore. With the scene wrapped up, today's filming process came to an end. Kui Yu Si silently pondered, did Ha Kui Than just help me escape? As Ha Kui Than walked past her towards the others, she instinctively lowered her head. He didn't stop but continued past her, instructing the staff, get an umbrella for that actress. Upon returning, Kui Yu Si received a message from Du Kuang, Man Man, I'm flying to Beijing tonight. If you're free, let's meet at home. Since Du Kuang had given her the keys, it would be her first time visiting his home. She felt a bit tense. Although they were legally married, it was only a temporary measure. What should I do now? I'm so stressed out. Two days of continuous filming, coupled with the wrist injury, left Kui Yu Si feeling extremely exhausted. Almost fainting, Kui Yu Si couldn't wait for Du Kuang to return before collapsing on the sofa and falling into a deep sleep. During the afternoon filming session, she had been exposed to continuous rain in this freezing weather. Her body began to sweat, and as the discomfort grew unbearable, tears welled up in her eyes. Suddenly, she felt someone's hand gently covering her forehead, followed by the warmth of their embrace. In her drowsy state, Kui Yu Si reached out her hand aimlessly, but couldn't touch anything. Next, Kui Yu Si found herself sinking into a soft, comfortable mattress, accompanied by hurried footsteps. She was then lifted up, her senses still clouded by sleepiness, and she vaguely felt a light touch on her lips, but it tasted bitter. Ha Kui then confirmed that she had swallowed a pill before reluctantly letting her go. However, moments later, Kui Yu Si suddenly wrapped her arms around his neck, pressing herself against him, causing Ha Kui then's body to tremble heavily. Does she know what she's doing? He wondered. After a while, he gently placed her back on the bed, covered her with a blanket, and began to leave. But Kui Yu Si held on to his arm, pleading, Don't leave me. Ha Kui then turned to look at her. You foolish thing, you still don't know how to love yourself, he said softly. He then gently applied medicine to her wound, changed the bandage, but he didn't understand why Kui Yu Si was crying. Ha Kui then touched her cheek tenderly, offering comfort. Do you know how much I fear your tears? You always break down my emotional barriers with just one teardrop, Kui Yu Si, feeling ill, fell into a state of unconsciousness, hearing a series of sounds as things were being tidied up. After that, there were footsteps departing. Kui Yu Si wasn't sure if it was the medicine taking effect, but her sleep was both peaceful and prolonged, when she woke up, it was already noon the next day. She groggily opened her eyes, gazing out the window at the dazzling sunlight for a moment before suddenly coming to her senses. Last night, Du Quan and I had plans to meet at his house, but I fell asleep before he returned, and then I think I had a high fever. In my drowsiness, someone was always taking care of me, giving me medicine, she recalled, Kui Yu Si sat up, noticing that the wound on her wrist had been bandaged. So everything that happened last night wasn't a dream. This is Du Quang's house. So the person who took care of me all night was Du Quang himself, she realized. Kui Yu Si pondered as she descended the stairs, finding the living room empty. Du Quang isn't home? Her thoughts were still swirling when she suddenly spotted Ha Du Quang busy in the kitchen not far away. She felt a bit dizzy. When did Du Quang learn to cook? During their teenage years, they practically met every day. Back then, due to his poor health, not to mention cooking, even the Ha family's staff didn't allow him to set foot in the kitchen. Ha Kui then in the kitchen heard Kui Yu Si calling out, Du Kuang, and turned his head. Kui Yu Si was startled, feeling her heart skip a beat. He approached her and reached out as if to touch her forehead, but Kui Yu Si instinctively stepped back. Ha Kui then thought to himself, indeed, until she confirms that I am Ha Du Kuang, 
she won't let down her guard with me, he withdrew his hand, then took out his phone from his pocket, tapping out a message and showing it to Kui Yu Si, man man, I just want to confirm if you've recovered from your fever. Kui Yu Si, feeling bashful, replied, I've recovered. Du Kuang, thank you for taking care of me last night, after she finished showering and came out. The food was neatly arranged on the dining table. Du Kuang, it looks so delicious even though it's your first time cooking, she said, if acting like Ha Du Kuang could make her let go of her guard against me, then I would willingly mimic a flawless Ha Du Kuang. After finishing the meal, Ha Kui then replaced the bandage on her wrist wound. Just then, the phone on the coffee table rang. Kui Yu Si picked it up to read, it was a message from Duong Hoa, Tu Yu Si. Your favorite novel, Tam Tian C, by Trin Vi Van, is going to be adapted into a movie soon. Kui Yu Si seemed very focused on her phone. Unaware that Ha Kui then was staring at her phone, Kui Yu Si quickly opened the website to search for the news mentioned by Duong Hoa, Tao Then Jia, a television series adapted from the best selling novel of Trin Vi Van in the past 10 years, the headline read, topping the hot search list. Fans had started discussing it on Weibo, with some pleading, please don't make this adaptation, while others asked, who will play the lead roles? Some fans even started conducting polls to determine the most suitable actors for each character in the script. As Kui Yu Si read through all the related posts on Weibo, she only managed to gather some useful information. The television series was produced by a new film and television company called YC. But there was no online contact information available for this company. In other words, even if she wanted to join the cast of the TAM TNC television series, she couldn't reach out to anyone involved. While Kui Yu Si was feeling frustrated browsing Weibo, Ha Kui then suddenly handed his phone to her, asking, Are you interested in TAM TNC? Kui Yu Si didn't feel uncomfortable at all when Ha Kui then glanced at her phone screen. She replied, This novel is very famous, and the author, Trin Vi Van, is currently extremely popular. This is a great opportunity for me right now. Upon hearing her response, Ha Kui then typed a string of words on his phone, tapping away. After typing only two words, he abruptly stopped. If Kui Yu Si found out that the film was produced by his company and that he was the director, he was afraid she might give up on the opportunity. After some contemplation, Ha Kui then deleted the previous message and replaced it with, I believe you will secure a role in that film. Kui Yu Si read the message and smiled softly. Thinking that Du Kuang had just casually asked. Ha Kui then didn't linger any longer and promptly left the living room. Watching his departing figure, Kui Yu Si suddenly felt a strange sensation, as if Du Kuang had changed somehow, but she couldn't quite put her finger on what exactly had changed. Upon returning to his study, Ha Kui then immediately contacted Trin Vi Van, recommending Kui Yu Si to her. Not long after, Kui Yu Si received a phone call from an unfamiliar number. Initially skeptical, she answered the call. A deep and serene female voice resonated from the other end, revealing itself to be Trin Vi Van. Hearing Trin Vi Van's voice, Kui Yu Si felt a moment of confusion. Trin Vi Van said to her, Someone has recommended you to me. After seeing your previous works, I feel that your aura is very suitable for the supporting female role in Tam TNC that we are about to film. Trin Vi Van's speaking pace was neither fast nor slow, but Kui Yu Si's mind couldn't keep up with her words. Author Trin Vi Van of Tam TNC personally called me to offer the supporting female role, Kui Yu Si couldn't help but feel stunned. On the other end of the line, the voice continued, coincidentally, tonight the investors and director of this film are having a meeting. And I want to finalize the casting before flying abroad tomorrow. Would you be able to come over here directly to sign the contract? Kui Yu Si agreed without hesitation, please give me the specific address and time. After hanging up the phone, Kui Yu Si began to wonder who had recommended her to Trin Vi Van. The only person who knew she wanted to act in Tam TNC was Du Kuang. However, his younger brother, Ha Kui Van, also worked in the television and film industry. It wouldn't be unusual for him to know some people in the industry. Therefore, the person who recommended her was indeed Du Kuang. To make a good impression on the film crew, Kui Yu Si arrived at the meeting location very early, only to find that Trin Vi Van and the others had already arrived. 
Hui Yuxi politely greeted Trin Vai Van, and the two exchanged pleasantries before Trin Vai Van led her to her seat. Have you read the script yet? Trin Vai Van asked. Hui Yuxi softly replied, Yes. Trin Vai Van continued, The female lead will arrive shortly. You can get acquainted with her first. If everything goes well, we can sign the contract. Kui Yuc couldn't believe her luck in meeting the female lead tonight, she was slightly excited about the prospect. After a while, the door opened, and before Kui Yuc could turn around to see who it was, she heard a familiar female voice speak first. Sorry for being late, there was traffic jam. Kui Yuc couldn't believe that the second film she returned to the entertainment industry for happened to be one starring TNCA, as Kui Yuc was eagerly awaiting to meet the female lead of the film the door to the VIP room opened. TNCA apologized and explained, sorry for being late, there was a traffic jam. Kuyusi was stunned, someone in the VIP room, joked, our female lead has arrived. Let's give her a penalty of three shots of alcohol for being late. After seeing TNCA, Kuyusi couldn't help, but, sigh at the twist of fate that brought them together again, something she never expected to happen. What she didn't anticipate was being in the same film production as TNCA. TNCA greeted everyone in the room cheerfully, her gaze briefly flickering towards Qiuc, not far away, hesitating for a moment before quickly regaining composure. TNCA stepped up to Qiuc as if they were old friends, happily exclaiming, Qiuc, it's been a while. Trin Vivan looked surprised at the two of them and asked, so you two know each other? TNCA replied, we were classmates in high school, then she turned to Qiuc and asked, Qiuc. Have you been doing well all these years? Qiuc felt a shiver down her spine, but in front of everyone, she could only play along with the sisterly act with TNCA, forcing a smile as she replied, it's been a while indeed. I've been fine. Though she didn't want any involvement with TNCA, Kui Yu Si knew she had to maintain a pleasant demeanor to avoid causing any disruption to the film production and her own image. TNCA's smile grew even brighter, then she shifted her attention to Trin Vai Van, asking, So Tu Yu Si is also a member of our film crew? Trin Vai Van replied, Kui Yu Si plays a supporting role. TNCA was momentarily surprised, but quickly regained her composure, praising, Trin Vai Van really has a good eye. She appeared genuinely impressed by Kui Yusi's acting talent and turned to her, saying, I'm glad to be in the same film crew as you. Kui Yusi, upon hearing this, seemed genuinely pleased, replying, I'm also very happy. I was worried about my performance, but now seeing you, I feel much more confident. As the half-hour mark passed and the main seat remained empty, Kui Yusi's heart was filled with suspicion. Whose seat was that empty after all? TNCA couldn't believe that someone as unknown as Kui Yu Si could cling to such a big film crew. She felt extremely uncomfortable. When TNCA engaged in conversation with others, Lam, the investor, whispered something in her ear, then raised his glass to apologize to everyone and asked to leave early. After leaving the VIP room, her perfect smile immediately turned icy. Stepping out of the elevator, she saw an empty parking lot quickly took out her phone, eager to make a call. As the call connected, TNCA angrily accused Tu Dao, what's going on? When you accepted the Tam TNC film. Could it be that she didn't check who the supporting actress was beforehand? It's not like she didn't know how much Kui Yu Si had developed in the past three years. Back then, we made a lot of efforts to defeat her. But this time, among the investors, Lam, the chairman, was very influential. I sincerely recommended Kui Yu Si to him. Knowing Kui Yu Si's character, she absolutely wouldn't yield, TNCA hadn't finished her words when her wrist was suddenly gripped tightly. Upon seeing it was Ha Kui then, she trembled in fear, her phone slipping from her hand and hitting the ground with a thud, Ha Kui then interrogated, are the words you just said true? TNCA, frightened, couldn't understand why Ha Kui then suddenly appeared here. Seconds later, his cold voice rang out again, demanding, Did you intentionally recommend Kui Yu Si to Lam Chin Nia? His voice, cold as ice, brought Kui Yu Si back to her senses. But how did he know that Lam Chin Nia was the person she was referring to as Lam Tong? Thousands of questions still lingered in TNCA's mind, 
Seeing TNCA remaining silent, Ha Kui then, losing patience, tightly clenched her hand before forcefully tossing it aside. Do you see her as a prostitute? He glared down at TNCA, anger burning fiercely in his eyes. This is truly the first time I've encountered such an audacious woman like you. Smearing and mocking others without blinking an eye. He spoke without hesitation, simultaneously staring at her pale face. TNCA fell silent for a moment, his continuous words piercing her heart like a cold knife, causing her pain. Whether it was three years ago when you were nothing, or three years later, when you became a famous actress, deep down you felt you couldn't compare to Kui Yu Si. You used all your cunning and schemes, directing them at her, mocking her, thinking you were stepping on her to rise up. But in reality, you forgot that mockery is also a form of longing. Whether it was three years ago, or three years later, he always protects Kui Yu Si like that. TNCA was deeply wounded by Ha Kui Thant's words. But it seemed he had no intention of stopping, continuing to speak, in this world, not everyone is like you, sacrificing in that way. Kui Yu Si has talent, charisma, hope, and a future. The stage belongs to her, far away from here. For her, I will do everything I can, upon hearing these words from him, TNCA widened her eyes in astonishment. It turned out that from the beginning, this trap was set up for her to fall into. Ha Kui, then, could orchestrate such a scheme, to help Kui Yu Si. He was not wrong, Kui Yu Si was naturally destined for better fortunes, than herself. Because of him, she didn't have to struggle as she did. Every day, she was surrounded by people, everything went smoothly for her. TNCA looked at Ha Kui Thant's figure, feeling overwhelmed with jealousy. She liked him, had always liked him, but he hated her to the core, because of another woman. A wave of envy and injustice immediately engulfed TNCA's heart, causing her emotions to fluctuate greatly. The moment Ha Kui then stepped into the elevator, TNCA suddenly raised her voice and shouted, Ha Kui then, three years ago, because of you, she had an accident and ended up like this, yet she has no idea. You say I deserve pity, but I think you're even more pitiful than me. No, not pitiful, you're more despicable, facing TNCA's words, Ha Kui then remained unreactive throughout. After hearing her final remark, his finger, which had been pressing the elevator button, suddenly paused. Then, he took a large step, swiftly returning to TNCA's front. If you hadn't mentioned it, I would have forgotten. The day you tried out for the role of Vong Tan, you colluded with Lam Na, to trap her in the abandoned school building. He said. Afterward, he directly took the car keys from her hand, pressed the lock button, then pulled TNCA's arm, opened the car door, threw her inside, and said, to make me more despicable, pay off what you owe her from that day today. After saying this, Ha Kui then slammed the car door shut. He locked the driver's side door, then ignored TNCA, who was frenziedly banging on the car door from inside, and coldly turned away. As he left, he threw back a remark, you should also try the feeling of being beaten with a stick for doing bad things to others. Ha Kui then entered the VIP room, greeted everyone, but couldn't spot Kui Yu Si anywhere and suddenly felt uneasy. He then asked Luke Nam, why don't I see the leading actress and the supporting actress? Luke Nam replied, TNCA left a while ago, and the supporting actress probably went to the restroom. After speaking, Luke Nam's gaze stopped at Ha Kui Thent's empty seat, showing a hint of surprise as he said, Lam Chairman still hasn't returned? Suddenly, TNCA's words from the parking lot earlier flashed through Ha Kui Thent's mind, and a terrible intuition crept into his heart. Ha Kui then abruptly stood up, his movement so sudden that it startled everyone in the room, who asked in confusion, what's going on? Ha Kui then brushed it off, kicked away the chair behind him, and quickly strode out of the VIP room. He silently prayed in his heart, please, let nothing happen to her. This creepy uncle tricked her into a private room, with sinister intentions towards her. Just at the critical moment, another man appeared, startling her. She mistakenly thought they were in cahoots, but in reality, the newcomer was there to rescue her. Not long before that, Kui Yu Si attended a party hosted by the film crew of Tam TNC. While taking a break and heading to the restroom, he suddenly heard someone calling his name. 
It turned out to be one of the main investors in the party, Lam Chin Nia. Kuyusi politely responded, then wondered why he was being sought out, Lam Chin Nia said, I'd like to have a chat with you about the Tam TNC film. Let's find somewhere quieter to continue our conversation. Despite feeling skeptical, Kuyusi agreed, thinking to himself that he would improvise if anything happened, the two entered the room and sat down. Lam Chin Nia said, the role of the supporting actress this time is incredibly challenging, and asked Kuyusi, can you handle it? Kuyusi promised to portray the role with all her heart. Lam Chin Nia handed her a drink, which Kuyusi accepted, silently remaining cautious and maintaining politeness to avoid offending the investor. She knew that in the entertainment industry, she greatly needed the support of investors and couldn't afford to offend them. Kuyusi initially thought Lam Chin Nia only wanted to discuss Tam TNC. However, as Lam Chin Nia continued to advance, Kuyusi realized that something was amiss. Lam Chin Nia began discussing inappropriate topics and deliberately pretended to be drunk, falling onto Kuyusi. Kuyusi instinctively tried to avoid him, but Lam Chin Nia reacted much faster, his hands swiftly wrapping around her shoulders, uttering words that sent shivers down her spine. Kuyusi finally regained her composure, but she knew she couldn't confront him directly at this moment. She decided to pretend not to hear and attempted to break free from Lam Chin Nia's grasp, saying, I'll return to the film crew. However, Lam Chin Nia clearly had no intention of letting her go, tightening his grip on her wrist. He smirked coldly and said, Don't pretend to be noble with me. I know exactly what kind of person you are. Dressing like that, you're not aiming for anything other than more benefits, right? Kuyusi's eyes filled with disgust as she pushed Lam Chin Nia away, wanting to flee. However, Lam Chin Nia grabbed her, throwing her onto the sofa, mocking, Come on, tell me, how much do you want? Kuyusi, still in shock, was pinned down by Lam Chin Nia, who began tearing at her clothes. Kuyusi struggled instinctively, thwarting Lam Chin Nia's malicious attempts several times. Frustrated and embarrassed, he became enraged, exerting more force to overpower Kuyusi. He humiliated her with his malicious words, threatening her, I am the main investor of Tam TNC, you'd better know your place. Kuyusi had never felt such humiliation before and immediately slapped Lam Chin Nia. He staggered for a moment, then furiously grabbed her by the hair, watching his movements closely. Kuyusi saw him take out a pill from his pocket. In her mind, she understood that if she truly consumed it, once the drug took effect, the consequences could be dire. She exerted all her strength to resist, but ultimately Lam Chin Nia, being a man, quickly subdued her. She could only watch helplessly as the pill gradually made its way into her mouth. Suddenly, a familiar voice echoed from outside the VIP room. As she struggled to discern whether this was a hallucination or reality, the door was abruptly flung open revealing a tall figure standing at the entrance. In a fleeting moment, she caught sight of the handsome face of the man, recognizing him as Ha Kui Than. Kui Yusi felt bewildered, unable to comprehend why Ha Kui Than was appearing here. When Ha Kui Than's gaze met hers, he noticed the fear in her eyes. Kui Yusi felt an overwhelming sense of fear, this scene reminding her of the time when she was at Ha Kui Than's house taking care of him, and he woke up wanting to do that to her. Kuyusi sprang to her feet, suspecting that Ha Kui Than and Lam Chin Nia were in cahoots. With horror, she shouted, Stay away! Ha Kui Than advanced towards her step by step. Moments later, Ha Kui Than grabbed Lam Chin Nia, who was on top of her, and slammed him onto the table. Lam Chin Nia questioned Ha Kui Than, Why are you doing this? and threatened, Don't forget about our cooperation with your YC company but Ha Kui Than had no intention of letting him off. Instead, he simply leaned down, picked up the bottle of liquor from the ground, and struck Lam Chin Nia hard on the head. Lam Chin Nia screamed, Do you still want to film Tam TNC? Even though you're the director, without me, what kind of director would you be? I'm the biggest investor, if I want to pull out, it's absolutely. Before Lam Chin Nia could finish his sentence, Ha Kui then grabbed him by the collar and ruthlessly threw him aside, without any mercy. Moments before, Kui Yusi was still stunned witnessing Ha Kui Then's actions against Lam Chin Nia. 
but upon hearing Lam Chin Nia's words, she fell into confusion. So, the CEO of YC Company and the director of Tam TNC were Ha Kui then. Kui Yu Si was still processing this shocking revelation when suddenly there was a loud thud. Startled. She trembled her body shivering. She saw Lam Chin Nia with bruised face kneeling before her. Instinctively, she involuntarily stepped back, recoiling. Then, Kui Yu Si heard Ha Kui Then's voice, firm and resolute, commanding Lam Chin Nia to apologize to her, apologize to her. Lam Chin Nia retorted, Ha Kui Then. Do you really need to be so insistent? He struggled to rise, but winced with even the slightest movement, indicating his pain. He glared at Ha Kui, then with resentment cautioning him, Don't overstep your bounds with me. Ha Kui, then seemed to have lost his patience. He took two steps forward, stepping on Lam Chen Nia's left shoulder, gritting his teeth as he uttered each word, Do you know how to apologize? Lam Chen Nia groaned in pain, trembling and grinding his teeth. After a moment, he reluctantly spoke, but continued his earlier words, You won't gain anything from this either. Ha Kui then suddenly grabbed the back of Lam Chin Nia's collar. Before he could strike, Lam Chin Nia, already dizzy from the blow, began crying out, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ha Kui then loosened his grip on Lam Chin Nia's collar, then placed a foot on his back. Lam Chin Nia hastily apologized again, I'm sorry. Miss Kui. It's my fault, I apologize. In that moment, Kui Yu Si couldn't differentiate between memory and reality. Her eyes were filled with shock, frozen in place even as Ha Kui then stepped in front of her, approaching closer, Ha Kui then finally noticed the slight disarray in Kui Yu Si's clothing. Her collar and skirt were torn, and there were five fingerprints imprinted on her beautiful, petite face. In particular, he realized that before he arrived, Lam Chin Nia had assaulted her. A murderous thought surged into Ha Kui Then's mind, momentarily softening his gaze before returning to Kui Yu Si with a cold and violent intensity. He struggled to contain the raging turmoil in his chest. After a moment, he reached out and took off his coat, draping it over Kui Yu Si's shoulders to cover her torn clothes. Ha Kui Then's unexpected gesture left Kui Yu Si stunned and speechless. She unconsciously looked at Ha Kui then, noticing that his handsome face no longer bore the violent expression from earlier. Was it her imagination? There seemed to be a hint of gentleness and sorrow in Ha Kui then's eyes, just as Kui Yu Si was hesitating whether to express her gratitude and leave, Ha Kui then suddenly lifted her up with a serious expression. He remained silent for a while, then finally spoke in a steady tone, Let's go. I'll take you away from here. With that, Ha Kui then carried her out of the room. As the elevator door opened, Kui Yu Si buried her head in his chest and whispered softly, Thank you. Ha Kui then realized that this seemed to be the first time since they reunited that she didn't refuse his offer. Without saying a word, Ha Kui then stepped into the elevator. The car quickly stopped in front of the apartment building. Ha Kui then said, With your current appearance, it's not appropriate to go into a hotel. If someone else captures it, it could lead to a lot of trouble if it leaks. He mentioned having some business to attend to at school tonight and that there wouldn't be anyone at home, suggesting Kui Yu Si stay for the night. Here's the password for the 18th floor, he added, although Kui Yu Si could sense Ha Kui then had no intention of getting out of the car. She accepted the paper he handed her. Despite Ha Kui then's hope that she would insist on him staying, she simply said, Thank you for the trouble. I'll get out first. Before Kui Yu Si could finish her farewell, Ha Kui then stepped on the gas and drove off. Kui Yu Si couldn't help but wonder if she had upset him in some way. Although Kui Yu Si had visited Ha Kui then's house twice before, she had never closely examined his room. Now she noticed that the decor of the room resembled the one she lived in at the Ha family's residence in Tatan. She suspected Ha Kui then deliberately assigned her this room, so regardless of what she thought, she would have to thank him this time. At that moment, Ha Kui then stood downstairs, lighting a cigarette, gazing up at his building. He noticed the light that had just been on was now off, but he couldn't recall when it had been turned off. Silently pondering, Ha Kui then thought, wouldn't she sleep better without me there? At that moment, his phone rang, and he glanced back at the window of her room. 
It was Lam Chin Nia calling. Ha Kui then understood that Lam Chin Nia's call was likely meant to clear the path for Kui Yu Si. If Kui Yu Si was hurt, destroying everything would be better. Kui Yu Si woke up the next day with a slight headache due to the effects of the medication from the previous night. Feeling dizzy for a moment, she suddenly heard Ha Kui Then's voice coming from the balcony, I know everything you've said. I made my intentions clear at the morning meeting. Kui Yu Si gently stepped closer to the window. It seemed like the person on the phone was still trying to persuade Ha Kui Then. His elegant eyebrows furrowed slightly, showing a hint of impatience, they can think whatever they want. This mess is of my own making, and I'll find a way to resolve it. Why do they have to stir up trouble? Kui Yu Si listened to his words, unable to shake off her suspicions. What trouble could Ha Kui then be facing? Could it be related to the conflict with Lam Chin Nia at the hotel in City B last night? These thoughts had just formed in her mind when. At that moment, Ha Kui then stood on the balcony, glancing through the corner of his eye, he noticed Kui Yu Si hiding behind the curtain. He crushed the cigarette but into the ashtray and called out, Aunt Truong. Aunt Truong understood what Ha Kui then meant to convey, and she walked over to knock on the bedroom door, saying, Miss, are you awake? Kui Yu Si opened the door, politely responding with a word, Aunt Truong handed her a set of clothes that had been prepared in advance, saying, Breakfast is ready. Please come down and eat. After a while, Kui Yu Si changed and went downstairs to the dining room. The well-prepared breakfast surprised her. Aunt Truong seemed to notice Kui Yu Si's discomfort and found a topic to talk to her about. I've been working here for three years now and you're the first girl Mr. Ha brought home, Aunt Truong said. Kui Yu Si focused more on the first part of the sentence, about Aunt Truong working there for three years. She looked at Aunt Truong with a bit of confusion and asked, Mr. Ha bought this house three years ago, Aunt Truong replied, yes, that's right. When this house was first put up for sale, Mr. Ha bought it immediately. Kui Yu Si felt puzzled. Didn't Ha Kui then start studying film in City B just this year? Wasn't he previously studying at University No. 1? Why did he buy a house in City B so early, she wondered. Aunt Truong responded earnestly, I remember asking Mr. Ha why he wanted to buy a house here. He said he wanted to settle down here, to meet someone again, Kui Yu Si suddenly became suspicious. Who could Ha Kui then be settling down here for? She startled herself, wondering why she was concerned about this. Right at that moment, Aunt Truong's respectful voice reached her ears, Mr. Ha, Kui Yu Si regained her composure and saw Ha Kui then striding towards the dining room. His hair was still damp. With a hint of moisture. He had changed out of his formal shirt into casual home wear, which made him look much younger and more elegant, seeing Aunt Truong greet her, he said nothing and helped himself to a bowl of rice. Just as Kui Yu Si was pondering what to say, Ha Kui then placed a bowl of rice in front of her. The dining room fell into a brief silence. Kui Yu Si gently spoke up, thank you for your help last night, and for letting me stay overnight along with this breakfast. Did you ask Aunt Truong to buy the clothes for me? Before Ha Kui then could respond, she continued, when I have the chance, I'll repay you, or Aunt Truong, Ha Kui then paused, while drying his hands, then glanced down. Kui Yu Si sneakily glanced at him, expecting him to be displeased, but to her surprise, not even three seconds later, he placed the wet towel down and softly uttered, Sure. The tension in Kui Yu Si immediately eased. The interaction between the two caught Aunt Truong's attention, making her wonder if these two youngsters only used their mouths for eating. After the quiet breakfast, Kui Yu Si stood up with a gentle smile to bid farewell to Ha Kui Then. However, just as she was about to leave, Ha Kui Then's phone, resting on the table, suddenly rang loudly. He picked up the phone and stepped outside. Within a few minutes of the call, his voice became much louder and more assertive, with a sharp tone, he thinks he's clever, huh? He wants her to personally come and apologize to him? Dream on. Tell him to go to hell. After hanging up, Ha Kui Then turned back to Kui Yu Si, his demeanor intense. What were you about to say just now? He asked abruptly. Kui Yu Si was about to say goodbye when she heard Ha Kui Then's question. She quickly changed her words. Are you in trouble? 
Ha Kui then probably didn't expect Kui Yu Si to suddenly ask him this question, his eyes looking at Kui Yu Si showed a hint of surprise. Finally, I felt something similar to emotions flowing from my heart, could her question be considered caring for me? Kui Yu Si noticed that Ha Kui then remained silent, so she voiced her speculation, is it related to? Kui Yu Si intended to say, is it related to me? But she hesitated, despite his assistance, deep down, perhaps she wasn't that important to him? Kui Yu Si pursed her lips and instead said, Is it related to Mr. Lam? Ha Kui then didn't hesitate and immediately dismissed Kui Yu Si's speculation, explaining that it was just a minor internal matter within the company. Kui Yu Si exclaimed, Oh, and then gestured towards the door, saying, I've been bothering you for too long, it's time for me to go. Ha Kui then stood there, his expression calm, not trying to hold her back. Watching the interaction between the two, Aunt Truong couldn't help but sigh. Kui Yu Si slowly walked out of Ha Kui Then's house and immediately received a message from Duong Hoa. She said, Tu Yu Si, something big has happened. The filming of Tam TNC scheduled for next February has been halted. The director of Tam TNC is Ha Kui Then, and that investor, suddenly, Three words popped into Kui Yu Si's mind, Lam Chin Nia. Could the withdrawing investor be Lam Chin Nia? Kui Yu Si quickly exited Weibo and composed a message to screenwriter Trin Vai Van, whom she believed would know the truth, asking, Trin Vai Van, is the news on the internet about Tam TNC halting production true? Shortly after sending it, Trin Vai Van replied with a simple sentence, Yes. Kui Yu Si hurriedly asked, Is it because of Lam Chin Nia? Trin Vivan replied, yes, but I don't know the specifics. It seems that Ha President got involved in a fight. Kui Yu Si speculated that perhaps the events of that night had caused the situation to escalate like this. Kui Yu Si's mind was still reeling from earlier, wondering why Ha Kui then didn't confide in her about his issues. Lost in thought, she only snapped back to reality when a classmate approached her and greeted her. The classmate, with a curious expression, asked, Kui Yu Si, what's the relationship between you and the handsome director Ha Kui Then? Kui Yu Si rebutted, there's no relationship between me and Ha Kui Then, don't talk nonsense. Her classmate responded, I'm not talking nonsense. If you don't have any relationship with him, why would he target Lam Na because of you? Kui Yu Si's movement froze as she looked at her friend with a perplexed expression, asking, he targeted Lam Na. Are you kidding me? Her friend, noticing Kui Yu Si's genuine reaction, exclaimed in shock, Oh my! You really didn't know? All the girls in our dormitory know about this. She sighed dramatically before continuing, Just recently, early in the morning, Ha Kui then barged into your dormitory, asking Lam Na where he had taken you. Upon hearing this, Kui Yu Si immediately understood. The incident her friend mentioned happened on the day she went to film the Vong Tan series. It turned out that Ha Kui then could find her that day because he went to the dormitory looking for Lam Na. The girl recounted a series of events from that day, Lam Na refused to speak, and then Ha Kui then grabbed Lam Na's limited edition bag. He almost threw it out the window, which terrified Lam Na. I truly believe that if Lam Na hadn't revealed where you were at that moment, he would have actually dared to throw the bag right out the window. It would have been better to compensate for a bag worth tens of thousands than to risk something worse. Kui Yu Si felt increasingly shocked as she realized the extent to which Ha Kui then went to find out where she was. Despite being terrifying that day, Ha Kui then remained handsome, which made her friend blush with embarrassment. A scene straight out of a TV drama had actually happened to her. Her friend reached out and shook her arm, saying, Kui Yu Si, I'm truly jealous of you. Kui Yu Si was still reeling from her friend's words when her phone rang. It was Lai Dat calling. Tu Yu Si, have you been in contact with Ha Kui then recently? Kui Yu Si quietly wondered in her heart. From the moment she woke up until now, she had almost always heard news related to Ha Kui then. No, what's going on? Kui Yu Si asked. Lai Dat told Kui Yu Si, it seems like Ha Kui then is in trouble. He continued, two days ago, he contacted me, wanting to sell his house over here. He went to the film department, but his family didn't agree, and they cut off all his financial resources, 
Kui Yusi felt a chill run down her spine. Ha Kui then was indeed cut off from his family's financial resources by the Ha family. She remained silent as Lai Dat continued speaking on the other end of the line. Recently, he has been preparing for the film, and all his assets accumulated over these years have been invested in it. If he cancels it, the investors will surely demand compensation. At that point, he won't just face family opposition, he might even end up in court, the situation was even more serious than Kui Yu Si had imagined. If it weren't for her, Lam Chin Nia wouldn't have withdrawn his investment, and Ha Kui then wouldn't be in this predicament now. He had taken action against Lam Na because of her, and he had also fought with Lam Chin Nia because of her. She truly couldn't understand why Ha Kui then always treated her so unpleasantly. Ultimately, why did he do this? After hanging up the call from Lai Dat, Kui Yu Si didn't know what to do, but at that moment, she couldn't help but care about Ha Kui then. His current difficulties seemed to be because of her, and she couldn't ignore it. Thinking about it, Kui Yu Si dialed Ha Kui then's phone number, but the other end was in a switched off state. After hesitating for a while, she finally hailed a taxi, worried that Ha Kui then was currently struggling alone and certainly feeling very uncomfortable. As Kui Yu Si was about to get out of the taxi and head towards the building, she saw Ha Kui then stepping out from inside, accompanied by someone else, TNCA, whom Kui Yu Si least wanted to encounter. Why was she here? Seconds later, Kui Yu Si realized that, just like during their teenage years, TNCA had a crush on Ha Kui then. Now that Ha Kui then was facing a major problem, was TNCA here to show her concern for him? Kui Yu Si took advantage of the moment before the two noticed her and quickly hid behind a parked car. From her hiding spot, she could hear TNCA's eager voice saying, Ha Kui then, I've told you so much, why don't you listen? As she hid, Kui Yu Si heard the click clack of TNCA's high heeled shoes hastening behind Ha Kui then. His steps quickened in response, while TNCA's footsteps sounded even more hurried, as if she were taking shorter strides. Curiosity overwhelmed Kui Yu Si, prompting her to peek out slightly. She saw TNCA standing in front of Ha Kui then, who, without patience, interrupted her before she could speak, I have nothing to say to you, please leave. TNCA seemed oblivious to Ha Kui then's words, persisting in advising him, Lam Chin Nia is not a fool. The script for Tam TNC is hard to come by, and he's a businessman. He just can't stand being humiliated. He wants Kui Yu Si to come and apologize to him in person. Suddenly, Kui Yu Si felt skeptical. Did Lam Chin Nia really mention her coming to apologize? Why wasn't she aware of this? Two seconds later, it dawned on her. She had guessed right. The continuous calls from Ha Kui then were indeed related to the issue between her and Lam Chin Nia. At that moment, not far away TNCA spoke up again, the board has given you a deadline. If you can't secure the investment fund within three days, don't even think about Tam TNC being shot. Even your YC company will be gone. Just agree to let me get rid of Kui Yu Si, and I'll help you persuade Lam Chin Nia to reinvest. You'll get even more than the previous 20%. Ha Kui then, from the moment Kui Yu Si eavesdropped on their conversation until now, had only spoken one sentence. Upon hearing TNCA's proposition, he immediately chuckled coldly and retorted, Are you still making conditions with me? Do you deserve it? Ha Kui then had risked consequences, with Lam Chin Nia, to save Kui Yu Si. But unexpectedly, Kui Yu Si went to have drinks with him, in the previous episode, it was mentioned that Kui Yu Si saw TNCA walking alongside Ha Kui then under his apartment building. It's true that TNCA has had feelings for him since their teenage years, so it's not surprising for her to show concern now that she knows he's in trouble. TNCA did come here because of this issue. But Ha Kui then didn't pay attention to her. As for Kui Yu Si, she only learned about Lam Chin Nia's demand for her personal apology from TNCA which further confirms her suspicions. TNCA is well aware of Ha Kui then's current situation. The board of directors has set a deadline for him, but they are still willing to negotiate with him. They only ask Ha Kui then to remove Kui Yu Si from the cast of the movie Tam TNC. TNCA assures him that she can help persuade Lam Chin Nia to reinvest in the project if he agrees to this condition. 
However, Hakui then looks at her disdainfully, do you also think you're worthy to set conditions for me? Don't think I don't know that you're behind Lam Chin Nia's withdrawal of investment. Ha Kui, then, is well aware of the schemes TNCA has been plotting behind his back. Now speaking frankly to her face, TNCA pales. Kui you see, hiding to eavesdrop, understands the gist of the conversation, but can't quite grasp it. It's clear that simply dismissing her could resolve the issue. Why isn't Ha Kui then doing it? She even suspects it's at the behest of Ha Du Kuang, never considering it might be because Ha Kui then has harbored feelings for her for many years. TNCA doesn't give up, expressing herself to Ha Kui then, but she's rebuffed, her demeanor now one of humiliation, devoid of the glamour of a famous actress. Kui you see, takes out her watch. If this is all because of her, then she'll be the one to end it. Kui you see heads to the store, transferring the recording from her watch to a voice recorder then arranges a meeting time with Lam Chin Nia. All of this is observed by TNCA, who tails Kui Yuxi. Seeing the car parked outside Diet Vien makes her feel somewhat puzzled. Suddenly, the assistant remembers that Lam is holding a meeting for his new film at Diet Vien today, and TNCA has agreed with Lam that if he pulls out his investment, she'll be a guest star in his new film. Kui Yuxi follows the staff into the VIP room feeling apologetic and humble, lowering her head. Unexpectedly, the scum of the earth is just that, right in front of everyone, he shamelessly hugs Kui Yu Si. As the saying goes, birds of a feather flock together, and the looks from the others are full of lustful intent towards Kui Yu Si. Lam Chin Nia's intentions are crystal clear, we can talk, but first, let's have a drink. Each person gets a glass, and you'll have time to talk to her. Seeing the waiter bringing the wine, Kui Yuxi knows perfectly well that Lam Chin Nia wants to exploit her as a hostess to make things difficult, standing before the table, facing the lecherous devils in front of her. She assumes that Lam Chin Nia, in front of others, would maintain some decorum and not go too far, so she raises her glass to drink. But she has thought too much, Lam Chin Nia, with a sly expression, reaches out and pinches her thigh, causing her to startle spilling the wine and wetting the front of her dress. Hearing the vile words coming from their mouths, thinking of the challenges Ha Kui then must face, she can only force a smile to go along with it. Unfortunately, everything is captured on camera, TNCA watches the video with great satisfaction, as if she can already imagine Ha Kui then's reaction after seeing it. However, this time she learned to be clever. She tells her assistant, find someone from YC Company, and send it to their internal group. As predicted, Ha Kui then sees the message on D4 and plays the video, as the angle is unclear. It looks a bit ominous, causing Ha Kui then to tremble uncontrollably, crash. The glass shattered, the body staggered, leaning against the wall, towards the restroom. Seeing the despicable man following behind, Kui Yu Si's eyes flashed, weakly falling into his arms. Lam Chin Nia showed a satisfied expression, grabbing Kui Yu Si's body and pulling her close, his hand squeezing relentlessly. Kui Yu Si immediately pushed him away, leaving Lam Chin Nia somewhat stunned. I'm very sorry, Mr. Lam. I used this method to deceive you to come out. I'm here to apologize to you directly, the old lecher's expression soured, his tone rude, so be it, if you apologize to me in bed, satisfy me, I will agree to reinvest. Otherwise, there's nothing more to discuss, Lam Chin Nia, eager and lustful, hugged Kui Yu Si, coercing her, make me happy, and I'll comply with you. Then, his thick, leech-like lips drew closer to her. Kui Yu Si's avoidance infuriated him. His attempt at seduction failing, he prepared to force himself upon her. Kui Yu Si struggled with all her might. Retrieving the prepared voice recorder, the lecherous old man, thinking she had given up resisting, smirked lasciviously, before hearing the voice emanating from the recording device, I've heard that at the B Cinema, you have a lot of girls working as hostesses. You toast first, I'll give you time to talk. Lam Chin Nia's voice darkened familiarly. Kui Yu Si replied, I've heard that recently you've been investing in a new project. If you cause any unfavorable impact, I'm afraid this project will also be affected. Won't it? Kui Yu Si's expression resembled that of someone eating Lam Chin Nia's excrement, struggling to hold back from salivating. 
what do you want? Kui Yuxi negotiated with him smoothly, just reconsider the investment, and the recording in my possession will be yours. Otherwise, everything will be destroyed, observing Lam Chin Nia's hesitant gaze, she continued, last time, Ha Tong was wrong to attack someone, but it was because Lam Tong did not respect me first. Considering that, you should also know that whoever invests in the Tam TNC group will benefit. Kui Yuxi shook the voice recorder pen in her hand. You're a smart man, I believe you understand which matters are weightier, she said, tightening her grip on the voice recorder pen. Lam Tong, I'll give you until tonight to think about it. If you have an answer, contact me, suddenly, Ha Kui then lifted his leg and kicked the door open. Kui Yuxi's pupils contracted as she looked at him, thinking he was about to attack Lam Chin Nia. But to her surprise, after Ha Kui then glanced at her, he immediately grabbed her and turned her around, throwing her into the car, then stepped on the gas and sped off down the road. Kui Yuxi didn't have time to brace herself and fell backward onto the seat. Looking at Ha Kui then with a hint of confusion, with a sudden break, Ha Kui then stopped the car, pulled Kui Yuxi to take the key card, and without saying a word, he dragged her along, heading straight into the bathroom and turning on the shower. A series of actions left Kui Yuxi confused, the water poured over her, making it impossible for her to dodge. When she tried to stand up, she was pushed back down, water flowing into her mouth, causing her to cough. Looking at Ha Kui Then's face, tears streamed down her cheeks. The red marks on her body pained Ha Kui Then's eyes as he exerted force, pushing her into the water again, the last time she had seen him so furious was three years ago. The sound of water splashing, Ha Kui then pulled Kui Yuxi out of the bathtub filled with water. Ha Kui then stared intently, his mind unable to shake off the images from that video. He grabbed her, kissing her neck, his anger reaching its peak, clouding his thoughts. He couldn't stop thinking about the possibility of someone with ill intentions harming her. He hadn't argued with his parents, given up his spot at the top academy, and the opportunity to study abroad, all out of fear for her safety. Yet here she was, drinking with them, Kui Yuxi widened her eyes in disbelief, unable to comprehend why Ha Kui then would treat her like this. How could he let Lam Chen Nia touch her? Tears welled up uncontrollably in Kui Yuxi's eyes. Ha Kui then, please, she pleaded. Ha Kui then responded. Why are you crying? Isn't this what you wanted? His words left Kui Yuxi stunned. Is this what I wanted? She echoed bewildered, Ha Kui then seemed crazed. Just tell me you're innocent, and I'll believe you. The video, the hickey, I can pretend I didn't see any of it, he exclaimed desperately. His gaze turned stern. How could you go drinking with Lam Chin Nia? How could you make such gestures towards him? But you won't let me touch you? Do you feel that I'm inferior to him, that I can't give you the roles you desire? That's why you can't wait to cling to him. Does he really think of me like that? Kui Yuxi also realized that someone had recorded the video and deliberately sent it to him, which led to his misunderstanding. But he didn't ask any questions that would confirm whether she was the kind of woman who would sell everything to achieve her goals. Kui Yuxi only felt bitterness in her heart. Whether it was three years ago or now, he always viewed her in that light. Was there anything left worth explaining? Yes, that's right. I sought him out only after I felt hopeless with Tam TNC, she spoke each word deliberately. I am that kind of person. Aren't I?